you know, so this is to create a positive habit uh, within everyone. And, and this course, like I tell people, is guaranteed to change your current paradigm structure. It will change beyond everything we're going to be doing today. We're going to be watching videos. We're going to be doing some class estimate, but your paradigm is the most important thing that we want to talk about today. So at the end of this course, every participant will be able to do certain things. One, to understand what paradigm is. To understand what paradigm is. And also the effects of paradigm. Now to use this you know, uh, problem solving models we will teaching you to actually fix the things you have, to learn problem solving skills. You might, you might have the model, but you might not know the skill. You know, then to avoid problem solving traps. There are lots of problem solving traps in our society today. Even as you walk, you have to know that there's gonna be a protagonist. In Nigeria, they say when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. And it's only in Nigeria that I've had that kind of statement made. You know, so you're gonna also know that while you try to do great, there are other things that will work against you. So we're not just gonna be exposing you to um, you okay. know what to okay. do. We are also be exposing you to things to do. Okay, I'm getting a feedback from the okay. here. All right. Um, okay, let me just do this. Uh, let me go ahead and activate that button. All right, so that um, when you come in, you're going to come in quietly. All right. Um, here we go. Okay. So sorry about that. You won't be able to unmute yourself until we tell you to. So I, I, I wish we didn't have to do, do that. So that the, the recording, I'm sure this thing is being recorded. You know, so we're going to be looking at uh, several videos um, today. They're going to be fun. I guarantee you that uh, they're going to be very, very fun. Now, let's start. Usually when you go to a problem solving class, people want to say, okay, let's define problem. Let's, let's talk about all of those stuff, which is equally good. You know, but I think all of us know it is easy to find the problem. But I want us to change our conditioning. I think the conditioning is something that will help us. So if we're able to prepare the ground, then we can build any house. If you want to build a tall story building, uh, a bungalow, whatever. But So let us remove the cobwebs now. Now, at this point, I will allow um, one or two people. I will, I'm multi tasking here. Um, I'm also trying to try to admit people reflex. Um, I, 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 will, I, will, I will allow one or two people to give me definition of this word. Definition, you can put up your hand and if your hand is up, Ajibade will call you. Then you can go ahead and unmute um, yourself. We're, we're going to give you permission to do that right about now. All right, so what's paradigm? Uh, one of my Igbo friends in a paradigm, paradigm. What's paradigm? Any, any hand up, Ajibade? Can you see any hand up from where you are? No, just no hands up here. Paradigm. Okay, who has ever heard about that word paradigm before? Or you have an idea? What do you think a paradigm is? Paradigm. Quickly, let's do that. That shouldn't take like more than a minute. No hands up so far. No hands up. Send it to the boss. Said. No one hand is up. Uh, but the your hand. One hand. One hand is up. Doi mola ajiboye. Okay, ajiboye. Okay, okay. Doi. Let's go. All right, paradigm she uh, simply means uh, a pattern or an example. Let me put it like that. Hello. Pattern. Example. Yeah. I've got it. And can you turn off your audio, please? If you're not, if you don't want us to hear what you're saying. All right. Let, let, let's ask Stephen at this time. Thank you very much for that, by the way. Um, Ajipola. Ajipola. Oh yeah. What about uh, Stevens? Steven with an S. You might want to unmute. Um, okay, you can go ahead and unmute right now, Steven. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, I want to say a paradigm is like an uh, an algorithm, something that is laid down 
or a, a state of mind or a disposition towards doing something, a particular yeah. pattern that is okay. probably uh, your calling. That's very good. Uh, you know, Stephen, you, you, know, you spoke very intellectually. I like that. So let's have uh, FM, X, I, M. Hello? Hello? All right. Yes. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, please, we can. Go ahead and speak. Okay. Um, I wore the paradigm shift. It implies uh, a change in, uh, in status quo or uh, a change in, you know, in a current way of doing things. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you, you actually, you know, define the entire word there or the, the, this thing there, the phrase. So paradigm, yeah, everybody is right and you're all right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, allow you not to unmute yourself. So okay, great. I, I just wanted to have an idea um, of what that word is. Even personally, I, I never knew what that word was until I think it was 10 years ago that I actually encountered that word. Now you hear it, but you don't know. It, it falls, it falls under one of those words that you you know what you what you think what you think it means, but you can't put a finger to it. So paradigm is everything we've talked about today. It's a scientific word, paradigm. And I, I place um, glasses there, uh, you know, what we so call spectacles, expect, you know, there because simple. You can say paradigm is what you see and how you see it. Paradigm is is a structure. That will follow it's a pattern then that pattern becomes what you accept it can be true it can be false but that is what paradigm is and i you know and, and i want us to think about that as we go into problem solving we are going to be looking at our paradigms first because if you don't understand your paradigm you might not know why you need to shift so when we talk about paradigm shift that cobweb needs to go now i, I don't know how many of you have watched uh, the movie um the Matrix. Matrix is one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, so I like the background of the Matrix. If you look at the, the movie, the Matrix, it's about understanding. Somebody thinks that they are alive. They are living in a world. But unknown to them, they're actually nothing more than battery. Battery that is designed to charge something. So how do you explain to someone that even though we're having this meeting right now, having this training, that we're not actually here? That in fact, we're not even we know we've not even been born. So that will really roast your brain. Okay, let me just leave the, you know, you know, the, the, the matrix analogy a bit. Then, then let's go to some simple uh, definition of a paradigm. Paradigm, those are images we carry around. You know, when you, when you say things like, oh, um, let, let's say Nigeria is corrupt, for example. If some people are saying Nigeria is corrupt, yeah, you know, they're, you know, they're not saying that the whole Nigeria is corrupt. They're actually saying that they've had an encounter with maybe one Nigerian that he didn't like. You know, or, or when you say, oh, this tribe is dirty. You know, you're, you're, you're not saying the entire tribe is dirty. You're simply saying that I've had an encounter with somebody from this tribe that I didn't like. You know, so it's their images that we carry around. This can be defined as your mental image of how things are out there. So when you're describing yourself, you're actually describing what is around you. We say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You are saying that condition is favoring you. You know, so paradigms are also your assumptions. There are things you assume because they might not be right. Your paradigm can actually be wrong, but that's your assumption. There are images usually from your background. When you think of going home, something comes to your mind. When you think of riding a bicycle, like me, when I think of riding bicycle on the street of Lagos, something comes to my mind. I think of people who have been knocked down. You know, I enjoy riding my bicycle. You know, the, the time I enjoyed it this year was during the lockdown. So I could ride my bicycle with my eyes closed. But right now, the whole world is back to life. So I think about all the crisis. So there are images behind me. So when I describe riding bicycle on Lagos, the, what comes to mind is the danger. And, and, and when I talk about it, it's the danger. So there are our background, our experiences, our notions. This will pass through. There are those unspoken assumptions of our lives. You don't say it, but it's true for you. So let me now ask a question. All of us here. I, I, I'm going to take a risk of, of muting all of us again. Um, maybe I'll decide either to mute you or we we'll use the text box or we we'll use the raise hand icon. So how do you 
define reality. Think about it. We're talking about solving problem, right? There's no way you can solve problem if you don't even know what problem is. You don't even know what's the problem. You're like, well, it's okay now. It's like trying to tell um, you know, your neighbors to, to please clean up the, you know, your surrounding or like, ah, but it's okay now. In their mind, this is perfect. You know, so your definition might vary. And so because of that, people don't see the need to change their paradigm. If that paradigm is okay with them. Now I'm going to show you a series of pictures that you know that, that have been used um, for decades, you know, no, really. And all I'm going to ask right now is a show of hands because I know if I if if we unmute everybody, trust me, man, there's gonna be a riot. There's gonna be a riot here. So let's say um let's let's do that now. And the question is that how many of you can see an old lady? If if you see an old lady in this picture. Or a young lady. I know some of you, if I show this picture for the next 10 hours, I guarantee you won't see anything. So to, to make life easy, I'm just gonna ask you, how many of you can see an old lady? If you see an old lady, put up your hand. If you can see a young lady, put up your hand. And the time is ticking. Yes, Stephen, type what you see. Uh, after putting up your hand, just type what you see so that we'll be sure you're not seeing a rabbit or you're not seeing a mouse. So we're, I'm, I'm testing, I'm testing your paradigm now. I'm testing your paradigm now. If you see an old lady, it's taking people a long time. Just one hand, yes. Just stare at the picture. Stare at it as long as you can, at least now. Tell me if you can see a young lady. Yeah, Olushego can see something. A young lady or an old lady, please type it in the text box and uh, I will know. So only two people so far. Let's give you, let's, let's take some, maybe like 15 seconds more. You will now know the power of paradigm, what you see and how you see it. Paradigm, what you see and how you see it. So far, only two hands up. Uh, Humphrey, your, your, your mic is not mute, you know, muted. You want to speak? So only two people have their hands up. Now, I'm, I'm not seeing the text box here because of the way my, my system is configured. I don't, I don't want to get distracted. Uh, maybe uh, Jibade might want to read out. If Hello. Any... Yes. Yeah, Mr. Emmanuel. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please. I, I, I just did a poll so that we can just send it as a poll. And what can you see? A okay, young lady, right. an old lady, I can just speak. Excellent. Okay, do a pull. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so you. I'll launch it now. You just see it. Just select. You just straight. This okay. Pull. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for making my life easier. Okay. So I've sent okay. it now. And we can just select either a young lady or, okay, good. A young lady and old lady. Then later we'll share the pool. All right. That's cool. So seven people out of nine see young lady and six out of 12 see an old lady. The rest don't know what they are saying. Okay, all right, let's just go ahead and, and end the poll, you know, right now, you know, we've, we've, we've got, gotten what we need. You know, so 71% um, see the young lady, 50% see the old lady. Now, if you see both young and old lady, maybe you'll be able to do that. Now, it will be good to find out how many of you are still confused about what you are saying? How many of you are still confused about what you are saying? I know you are. Now, the next thing I want us to look at quickly is this. Duck or rabbit? What do you see? Duck or rabbit? Uh, maybe, maybe we just want to you know, re you know, relaunch the poll. OK, I'll do that. Shit. Duck or rabbit? If you see duck, let's know. If you see rabbit, let's know. Duck or rabbit? After this poll, I'm just going to breeze through the next. Um, the next examples. So I think um, we'll be able to make 
make the points <laughs> right now. Now, talk, you know, talk, talking about the old lady uh, photograph and young lady photograph, now it is hard. What if I tell you that there is no old lady in that, in that um, picture? Some of you are gonna be surprised, right? That picture is not of an old lady. That picture is just a young lady looking to her right. But for some reason, our mind imposes the old lady into it because there's something you must have seen. If you've never seen the picture of an old lady before, your mind cannot impose it on another picture. So paradigm is something you bring from your background, something you've seen before. Now, the next question we're asking is, is it a rabbit or is it a duck? Interestingly, half of us are saying they are saying ducks. 64% say they are saying rabbits. What if I tell you, or I had told you before, that it's neither a duck or a rabbit? So what your mind is doing, because you have seen a duck before, if you have never seen a duck before, I guarantee you, you will not think of it being a duck. And if you have never seen a rabbit before in your life, you cannot project that image into this um, you know, exercise. All right, so we are, we are, we are going to go ahead and stop the the um, poll right now. Thank you. Um, I'll go for my that. So So I, I can use the same analogy to, to get to think about this. So some of you, you know, look at this picture and you see the head of a lion in the midst of a zebra. But the truth is that there is no lion in that photograph. I know sometimes when I tell people, they will argue, say, no, no, what do you mean there's no lion? I say, well, there's no lion. It's just your mind playing tricks on you. What you think is a lion's eyes are actually ears of a zebra. What you think is a lion's mouth are actually two zebras together. But your mind, because you have seen a lion before, you superimpose a lion into it. This picture here shows the head, a, a bust of, uh, of an old man, a, a bald old man, you know, with some little hair at the back, bearded old man, you know, with his arm, by, you, know, by, you know, by his chest, and he's looking, um, is it right or left? That picture where you are, he's, he's, you know, he's looking to my left. Now, people will say they see that, but the truth is that there is no bald-headed old man in that picture. What, is, what you have there is just an arc or an arch, an arc, and you have a woman and a man facing each other, and there's a dog lying on the floor, on the paved floor, and that is what your mind tells you is a hand, is arm. Now, many people will see this one and say, ah, that was Jesus Christ. That's it. That, you know, you know, that, you know, that's the head of Jesus Christ. <laughs> one, you have never seen Jesus before, so you cannot even say it's him. Number two, what you just see there are people carrying a cross and several people around, but your mind quickly tells you there's a head of someone. When you look at this one, you say, oh, this, this is a picture of two elderly uh, couple, a man by the right, a woman by the left, and they are looking at each other. But, you know, wh whereas in the river, there is no elderly couple in that picture. So what you have is just two mariachis. That's what they call them in, uh, in, in Spanish, mariachis. Mariachis that are playing, um, you know, they are, they, are, they are singing, you know, playing the guitar and singing. And there's a woman coming out from the corner of her house, and that is the man's ear. That was from here. So I'm trying to ask people, how many tigers are in this, you know, photograph? People have people tell me, oh, three tigers. We, we, we can see a tiger by the left. We can see another tiger lying down up. You can see a big tiger. And I tell them there is only, there are only two tigers here. What you have as a big head tiger. It's not even a tiger at all. It's just a reflection. It's actually waterfall. It's waterfall coming down. So you see, your paradigm is very, very important. See, because, and that is why people will say, it can never work. You know, your people will say, ah, you know, no matter what you say, ah, Nigeria, mm, we, you know, we cannot change. That's all we be. Because our paradigm has a set to tell us that this is how things must always be. So before we go into problem solving, I'd like to encourage us to please just like uh, Morpheus told Neo in The Matrix, you need to free your mind. You need to open up your mind. Let, allow knowledge to flow in. Allow insight to flow in. Do not put any inhibition. I think it's inhibition we put before ourselves that tells us that things cannot be done. And that is why the same Nigerians that you will see when you are traveling to South Africa, uh, you know, you are going to Congo or the US 
or India, anywhere, you know, you, 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 you fly the same airline, uh, you know, the same plane with Nigerians, and Nigerians go down there, you know, they, they, you know, they touch down, they, they, you know, stay on the queue, everything is okay. That is the experience I have all the time that I travel. Now, when you are coming back into Nigeria, the same Nigerians, shortly before the, the, you know, the, the, you know, the plane hits the ground, by the time hits the ground, they're already unbuckling. And why the plane is taxing? So, to, you know, to, you know, to where it's going to stop, people are already standing up. And I'm wondering, it's going to take you at least 20 minutes to get up. Why don't you sit down? You know, I, I remember one embarrassing uh, situation. I mean, I have a very embarrassing situation whenever I travel, coming back home. I think I was coming back from Egypt. And, uh, and, and, and the pilot had, you know, you know, you know had, had to announce. And what he said was, Nigerians, please sit down. That was very embarrassing. You know, and I wonder, is it not the same Nigerians? You know, you know, that you saw in Cairo, it is not the same Nigerian in JFK, it's not the same Nigerian because in our mind, we are telling ourselves anything goes in Nigeria. So it's a paradigm. It's a paradigm that people would think things should not work in Nigeria, that things can only work outside. So you cannot, you know, learn problem solving or do anything problem solving if you don't first remove the cobwebs. So for the next um, maybe two minutes, we are going to go into an exercise for the next two minutes. I will show you a video. This video is an experiment that was conducted, real experiment that was you know, conducted. You know, but today I'm going to show you uh, an animated video of this experiment. Um, we are going to be stopping at the point to seek wisdom in what we are about to, to see at this time. So let us go ahead and watch the five. A group of scientists placed five monkeys in a cage and in the middle a ladder with bananas on top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey went up the ladder, the others beat up the one on the ladder. After some time, no monkey dare go up the ladder, regardless of the temptation. Scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys. The first thing this new monkey did was go up the ladder. Immediately, the other monkeys beat him up. After several beatings, the new member learned not to climb the ladder, even though he never knew why. A second monkey was substituted, and the same occurred. The first monkey participated on the beating for the second monkey. The replacements repeated until what was left was a group of five monkeys that even though never received a cold shower, continued to beat up any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder. If you asked the new group of monkeys why the beatings took place, the answer would probably be, Well, I don't know. That's just how things are done around here. Okay. So that's the story of the five monkeys. So this experiment was conducted, um, placing a banana on a ladder in a cage with five monkeys. Each time, of course, monkeys love bananas. If there's one thing they love, they love bananas. And that's why even here in Nigeria, when somebody is very say you'll be monkey banana. You know, so each time a monkey attempts to go up there, they will sprinkle water. And monkeys hate water, you know. Um, and that goes on and on and on. You know, so they now know that whenever you try to go up there, water will come down. So nobody wants to get wet, so let's leave the banana the way it is. So what the scientists did was to remove one monkey and place a fresh monkey, one that never, that never experienced, um, um, you know, shower, never experienced it. Imagine the monkey entered the, the cage. The first thing he did was to run to, you know, to go and get the banana. The rest of the monkey ganged up and beat him up. He tried again, they beat him up. He tried again, they beat him up. Until the guy had learned, okay, ah, if you don't want to get beaten, you know, don't go the banana. So he learned that lesson. So the scientists now removed one other old monkey and put another fresh monkey. That one to try to go up. If I did, you know, the first new monkey joined in beating him up until they replaced all the monkeys there. So if you ask them, why is it that people don't climb, you know, you know that, that uh, banana, I do and get banana. They'll say, well, that's how we do things here. You see, they never knew about the water. And that's what happens to a lot of us. There are a lot of things today that we do, but we don't even know the origin. You don't know the history. And like they say, if you don't know where you are coming from, you will not be able to appreciate where you are. Then you cannot determine where you want to be. And that, and, and that is the way to destroy people's psyche. And guess what? 
That would, you know, you know, this same thing has been done in our country. We stop teaching history in Nigeria. We stop primary school, no history. Secondary school, no history. Then somebody now wakes up and does jam and say, I want to go and study history in university. So what history are you, are you studying in university? So people today don't know, um, whenever I teach college students, these are university students, I ask them, do you know the richest man ever in the world? The richest man ever. And they will tell you Warren Buffett, they will tell you Bill, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, Bill Gates, you know, they will tell you the, the, you know, the, 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 the Rockefellers. I said, no, you know, the richest man ever is actually a West African. His name was Mansa Musa. And they were like, really? They don't know because they were not taught. So, you, you know, you were taught that you are a slave. You know, you are taught you are black, even though nobody's really black. You know, you are taught all kinds of things. But you're not taught that you are actually princes and princesses. You know, so there's a lot that, that we do not know. You know, so if you don't know where you're coming from, any label anybody gives you, you know, just stick because you don't know what you had before. So to understand problem solving, you need to open up your mind. You need to, be able to free your mind. Nothing is impossible. Everything can be questioned. Anything can change. You know, maybe you are in a company, you know, maybe you are running your own private business or whatever. And I know in a company, say, ah, that's how we do it here. So because of that, people don't actually... Uh, you know, achieve greatness. People never achieve greatness because they have put themselves into this box that sometimes we call status quo. We're in a status quo. And sometimes we're afraid that, oh, if I, if, if I bring fresh idea, I'll be hated. If I bring fresh idea to organization, there'll be bad belly. So we tell ourselves that. So because of that, we don't do anything. So today, where is your paradigm? So when we think about the world as it is, what we are doing really in reality is we are projecting our assumptions and our expectations into our reality. That reality might not even be real, but you are projecting something as your reality. You are saying, oh, I cannot be smart. I cannot be successful. I cannot be great. I cannot be Who told you that? It's something you're subconscious. So we describe things via our own perceptions and our own assumptions. Now, when we describe things, it's actually ourselves that we are describing. We are saying, I cannot make any change in my life. So we describe ourselves, and interestingly, we now project it on others and on other things around us. So today, I want to encourage all of us, even as we go through, through this, open your mind. It's very important that you open your mind uh, you know, to really understand. Now, for the next um, several minutes, you know, this is actually going to, going to be like a book of our assignments. You're going to be doing assignment based on this next video. Um, I have used this video to train bankers um, all over the, you know, the country, outside the country, uh, from, from Zenith Bank, uh, what do you call it, from Access Bank to First Bank to Diamond Bank to, you know, Bank in Ghana, every single thing. Each time I show this video, uh, people are usually blown away. So I want us at this time, no matter where you are, I know this is an online training, so I, I don't know where you are, <laughs> as long as your, your audio and video is off, nobody knows. But I want to encourage you, please listen. I want you to watch. This will change your reality or what you think your reality, is, your reality is. I want you to watch carefully. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to think as you're going to be hearing and saying things. And if possible, write things down. By the time we finish this video, we're going to be breaking into rooms. And you're going to have assignments that you're going to be doing. We're going to just two questions I'm going to ask you. One question, the entire room, we answer it, the entire group, if you are in group A, B, C, D, or thereabouts, your entire group will answer just one question. And that one question, you, you know, uh, it, it's broken down into like two, three, four parts. Then the second question is personal question you're going to be answering. And that question is a personal question directed to yourself. And when you answer that question, your team leader will write everybody's answer down. That is the answer that the whole group have given about the general question. Then the answer, you don't have to put the names there. If you want to, you can actually put the names there. This is one. Uh, they will answer, okay, uh, Emmanuel M. says this. Emmanuel's answer is this. Uh, Jide's answer is that. Paula's answer is that. You know, then you will see what will happen in the room. So listen carefully. And in the middle of this video, we're going to be doing a quick class exercise that will, that will require you to type in your answer quickly. Okay, I'm going to give you like about 15 seconds to do that. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're going to stop the video and allow you to type in your answers quickly. And from there, you will now see the impact of paradigm in our life. So before you talk about problem solving, 
let's see the damage that has been done to us already or we've done to ourselves. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be looking at the business of paradigm. Please listen carefully. And why does it keep happening even today? When you think about it, the last two decades of the 20th century were amazing. A series of revolutionary changes occurred that have affected almost everyone on planet Earth. The space shuttle making regular flights to the International Space Station. The widespread application of total quality and Six Sigma management. The birth of the Internet, the World Wide Web, and e-commerce. The dissolution of the second mightiest nation on Earth the Soviet Union without having a war. The global commercialization of cellular phones and pagers giving people around the world access to communications that had once only been a dream. The adoption of the euro by countries who used to fight over the sanctity of their own national money. The radical new design of buildings and spaces. And yet these changes, as important as they have been to the global economy, were met with substantial resistance by thoughtful people around the world. Why? Why do people everywhere, in every culture, resist new ideas? That's the question I've been studying for more than 20 years. And I believe a powerful part of the answer lies within the pages of a book written by scientific historian Thomas Kuhn. It contains a concept that can enhance your ability to innovate, increase your capacity to lead, and help you to discover the future. You see, it all has to do with paradigms. I first ran into the word paradigm in Thomas Kuhn's book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. When you look up paradigm in the dictionary, you find it means pattern or model. Let me offer you an extended definition. A paradigm is a system of rules and regulations that does two things. First, some of the rules set limits or establish boundaries, just like a pattern sets the edges. Then the rest of the rules offer you guidance on how to be successful by solving problems that exist inside those boundaries. In a sense, they offer you a model for problem solving. So a paradigm is a problem solving system, and a paradigm shift is when you change from one set of rules to another. In his book, Thomas Kuhn explored how paradigms affected scientists. He discovered that scientific paradigms act like filters that screen data coming into the scientist's mind. Data that agreed with the scientist's paradigm passed through those filters easily. In fact, scientists saw agreeable data amazingly well. That's positive and valuable. But Kuhn also discovered a startling negative effect. Some kinds of data were very difficult for the scientist to perceive. What kind? Data that didn't match the scientist's expectations. In fact, the more exceptional the data was, the more trouble scientists had dealing with it. It was as if their paradigms interfered with their ability to clearly see the data. In fact, Kuhn discovered that in some cases, scientists literally physiologically were incapable of perceiving the exceptional data. For all intents and purposes, that data was invisible. Now, let me put Kuhn's findings in more general terms. All human beings, not just scientists, have paradigms that influence the way we see the world. We all constantly select that data that best fits our rules and try to ignore the rest. As a result, what may be perfectly obvious to a person with one paradigm may be totally imperceptible to someone with a different paradigm, because each paradigm filters the world in a different way. I call this filtering phenomenon the paradigm effect, and it is the paradigm effect that makes dealing with change and anticipating the future so difficult. The paradigm effect can prevent any one of us, no matter how smart we are, no matter what line of work we are in, from finding breakthrough solutions to the problems in our lives. No one is immune. Now up to this point, we've only been talking in abstractions. 
So let's take a look at some concrete examples that demonstrate just how powerfully our paradigms influence the way we see and understand the Listen world. carefully. I've set up a simple experiment to test your adding paradigm. I'm going to show you a series of numbers one at a time. And yes, they are in the base 10. I want you to add them silently in your head. Don't write. Don't Ready? Add them up in your head. Don't, don't write it down. Total. All right. So we, we are going to pause here. And um, we are, we are, we, you know, we are, we are going to ask for feedback. What was your total for this um, mathematical um, addition that we just had right, right now? I'm, I'm going to allow you to speak. I'll just unmute yourself and tell us the answer. If you can't uh, speak, just write it and type it down. Just type it down. Quickly, let's do it quickly because of time. Tell us. Go ahead and just tell us your total. Or you can type it down, just send it in. 5,000. 5,000, okay, good. I'm writing it down. 5,000. Um, uh, yes, um, 3,060. Hold on, 3,050. Where's again? 3,060. 350, 360, okay. Where's again? 5,000, sir. 5,000, where's again? 3,070. 3,070, one more person, one last person. One last person, quickly. 100. 1,100. 1,100. 1,100. Okay, now let's, let's do this. I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and unmute everyone right now. You see, why did, did we show you the same thing and everyone comes up with different answers? You see, that is the paradigm effect that we can all see the same thing, you know, before we're showing you um, optical illusion, uh, okay, of lion, of tiger. Now we are looking at clear numbers, numbers that you and I deal with, and they are in the base 10. So it's not like we're talking about six, seven, they're just like 1,000, 1,000, 10, 10, and yet we are all getting all kinds of answers. So now you are beginning to understand the paradigm effect. There's no way you can solve a problem if you first don't deal or understand and deal with the paradigm that you have. So we're going to continue with the video at this time. Um. For those of you who got 5,000, would you please raise your hand? That's the answer most people get. Unfortunately, it's not the right answer. Let's look again. OK, let's go. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, right? 40 plus 30 is 70, plus 20 is 90, plus 10 is 100, right? 4,000 plus 100 is 4,100. Would those of you who got 5,000 please raise your hands again? Don't feel bad. I once showed this problem to 280 certified public accountants. Almost every one of them got it wrong. And these are the guys who do our taxes. But seriously, why did we mess up? Instead of helping us, our adding paradigm actually got in the way and kept us from seeing what was really happening. We had to carry this one somewhere, and it was obvious that we should carry it to the fore. Our adding paradigm made us feel sure that what we were doing was right and blinded us to the correct answer. That's the paradigm effect in action. I brought you to Hennepin Technical College in Eden Prairie, Minnesota to show you another paradigm. This one has to do with automobiles. In 1976, during America's energy crisis, a group of students taught by Ernie Parker decided to build an energy efficient car. Let me give you the numbers. The car weighed 2,000 pounds. It went zero to 60 in less than 10 seconds. It got 77 miles per gallon, had a 16 horsepower engine. Today, 77 miles per gallon would be considered wonderful. You can imagine what that meant in 1976. But there's a catch. Anyone who knows anything about cars knows that those numbers don't add up. A 16 horsepower engine simply cannot accelerate a 2,000 pound car that quickly. Yet these students did exactly that. How? By utilizing a different paradigm. 
You see, the students weren't in an auto mechanics class. They were right here in the advanced hydraulics class, and they knew using their paradigm that they could capture and reuse energy ordinary cars waste. Let me show you how with this simple prototype. When this vehicle slows down, it doesn't use standard brakes. Instead, the front wheel turns a hydraulic motor pump and it pumps hydraulic fluid into this storage cylinder, capturing otherwise wasted energy while slowing down the vehicle. When this vehicle is stopped, its gas engine turns a pump that puts even more fluid into the cylinder. All that pressure is stored energy waiting to be used. Watch, I can accelerate without even starting the engine. So the acceleration comes not from the little gas engine, but all that pressure that's been stored in the cylinder. The job of the little engine is to hold the vehicle at speed, and it can do that getting more than 70 miles per gallon. So here's a question for you. If the students who designed that car had been in auto mechanics, do you think they could have even conceived it? I think the answer is no, because the piston engine paradigm does not provide for waste energy capture and storage. Now, I'm not suggesting this vehicle is the next automotive paradigm, but it does demonstrate a powerful principle. What may be impossible to do with the old paradigm may be easy to do with the new paradigm. In the late 1930s, an inventor was trying to interest corporations in his new idea. He brought it to the research department of a major photographic company. This is a model of the actual kit he used to demonstrate the process to one of their senior scientists. With little more than a box, a bright light, a specially coated metal plate, and some fine black powder, he created almost instantly and with no wet chemicals a very faint picture of a set of numbers. Now we don't know exactly what the scientist said about all this, but we do know one thing for sure. He wasn't interested in that silly idea, so he showed the inventor to the door. But the inventor, Chester Carlson, had the last laugh. You see, what he invented was electrostatic photography, the Xerox process. Pity that poor scientist. He was unable to see beyond his paradigm. And as a result, Kodak missed one of the biggest business opportunities of the 20th century. In the early 1960s, Japanese manufacturers were known for things very different than today. Cheap toys, poor quality steel, imitations of American products, simple electronics. And that was our expectation for Japan, to always produce inferior products. But unknown to most business executives in America, a paradigm shift was transforming Japan. W. Edwards Deming and Joe Duran, both Americans, were teaching the Japanese about total quality, or Six Sigma as we call it today. While the Japanese were learning to perfect things, American companies, in fact most companies around the world, ignored the whole quality idea because they saw no need to change. And so it was the Japanese who gained the high ground in quality. It was the Japanese who started an epidemic of quality that swept around the world. And it has cost American and European companies hundreds of billions of dollars to regain parity. That's how expensive it can be to miss a paradigm shift. There is a crucial and profound truth hiding behind the paradigm examples I've shown you. No matter how tall your skyscrapers, or how big your market share, or how global your organization, when a paradigm shifts, everyone goes back to zero. Your past success guarantees nothing in your future. Toyota put General Motors back to zero. Dell did it to IBM. Walmart did it to Sears. The Japanese did it to the Swiss. Now here's a paradigm question for you. What nation used to dominate the world of watchmaking? Switzerland, of course. For more than a hundred years, they were renowned for their watchmaking excellence. In 1968, they had 65% of the world market share, and according to expert estimations, more than 80% of the profits. Yet just 10 years later, their market share had fallen below 10%. And in the ensuing three years, they had to release 50,000 of their 65,000 watch workers. Today, what nation dominates the world of watchmaking? Japan. 
1968, they had virtually no market share. So, how could the Swiss watch industry be so rapidly destroyed? The answer is painfully simple. They were put back to zero by a paradigm shift. Many of you are wearing that paradigm shift on your wrists right now. The quartz movement watch, totally electronic, a thousand times more accurate than the mechanical watches it replaced, battery powered, all new rules. So who invented this revolutionary design? The Swiss themselves, right here in Neuchâtel at their research laboratories. Yet when their own researchers presented this idea to the Swiss watch manufacturers in 1968, they rejected it. After all, it didn't have any bearings. It didn't require a lot of gears. It didn't even have a mainspring. It had none of the marvelous mechanical complexity the Swiss were so good at. Therefore, it couldn't possibly be the future of watches. So confident were the Swiss manufacturers in that conclusion that they didn't even protect the idea. Later that year, the researchers displayed that watch for all to see at the World Watch Congress. Seiko of Japan walked past, took one look, and the rest is history. You know, if I'd been in Switzerland in 1967, I would have loved to have asked them a question I ask all my clients. What is impossible to do today in your business, but if it could be done, would fundamentally change it for the better? Maybe the Swiss would have realized that the quartz movement watch was the answer to that question and the answer to their future. Who knows? At any rate, it's an important question for you to ask at every level of your organization. Remember, What's impossible to do today may be easy to do tomorrow, just like the quartz watch. Please keep in mind that this is not a story just about the Swiss. It's about you. It's about me. It's about any organization, any culture, any nation that assumes that what has been successful in the past must continue to be successful in the future. Let me remind you once again, when a paradigm shifts, everyone goes back to zero. Not even the best watchmakers in the world could stop time. What I want you to remember here is that paradigms dramatically affect our judgments and our decision making by influencing our perceptions. We must never forget, we see best what we're supposed to see and poorly or not at all, that data that doesn't fit our paradigm. So if we want to make good judgments about change, if we want to lead successfully to the future, we must become aware of our present paradigms and then be unafraid to replace them. Now let me share with you some key observations about paradigms. Observation number one, paradigms are common. We have paradigms in almost all aspects of our life whether it's personal or professional, spiritual or social. Observation number two, paradigms are useful. They help us identify what's important and what's not. They focus our attention. They give us invaluable guidance for problem solving. That's good. But, and this is number three, and it's a warning. Sometimes your paradigm can become the paradigm, the only way to do something. And when you're confronted with an alternative idea, you reject it out of hand. This can lead to a nasty disorder I call paradigm paralysis. Paradigm paralysis is a terminal disease of certainty. It is easy to get, and it has destroyed more than a few institutions. This reminds me of a maxim. Those who say it cannot be done should get out of the way of those who are doing it. Observation number four. The people who create new paradigms are usually outsiders. They are not part of the established paradigm community, so they have nothing to lose by creating the new. This means something very special for you. If you want to find the new paradigms that are developing in your field, you must look beyond the center way out to the fringes, because almost always the new rules are written at the edge. That's where Apple started. That's where the Green Party began. That's where microloans were invented. That's where the woman's movement was born. All of them at the edge. Number five, 
Those practitioners of the old paradigm who choose to change to the new paradigm early in its development, like Galileo, have to be very courageous. Let me quote from Thomas Kuhn on this. A person who embraces a new paradigm at an early stage must often do so in defiance of the evidence provided by the problem solving. A decision of that kind can only be made on faith. The mark of these paradigm pioneers is great courage and trust in their intuitive judgment. And now for the last point, and the most important, you can choose to change your paradigm. Perhaps the greatest strength human beings have is that we are not genetically encoded for seeing the world only one way. You can choose to shrug off your old paradigm and adopt a new one. That's why I'm such an optimist about the future. There's a story I'd like to tell you. Once upon a time, there was a young man with a very fast sports car who loved to drive on curvy country roads. One day, he was out driving his favorite road when around the curve came a car out of control. Just as they were about to collide, the car pulled back into its lane, and as it passed, the driver yelled out, Pig! Well, the young man was shocked at her insult. So before she disappeared down the road, he yelled after her, Cow! He thought to himself, how dare she call me a pig? I was in my lane. She was the one who was hogging the road. But he wasn't too upset because he had gotten her before she got away. And so he put the accelerator to the floor, whipped his car around that curve, and ran into the pig. That was a paradigm story. The young man was responding with old rules. You call me a name, I'll call you a name. But when you think about it, the woman was really trying to warn him. I believe the next 10 years are going to be filled with people coming around curves yelling things at you. If you have paradigm paralysis, you're going to hear nothing but threats. On the other hand, if you have paradigm pliancy, you're going to hear some wonderful opportunities. The choice is entirely yours. Sometimes people get overwhelmed by the future. They look forward and think, how can we cope with all this change? The answer to that question can be found by looking back to our great-grandparents. In many ways, they dealt with changes at least as profound as what we're involved in right now. You must remember that in 1900, radio would still have been considered magic. Think about it, in audible voices, traveling through the air. In the space of 20 years, Henry Ford built his first automobile. Thomas Edison invented the movie camera. Madame Curie discovered x-rays. The Wright brothers proved the experts wrong and created heavier than air flight. The electron was discovered. The cause of malaria was identified. And a man named Albert Einstein proved that E equals MC squared and the atomic age was conceived. The paradigms of our ancestors were forever altered during this time. And you know what? In spite of all that change, they did just fine. We wouldn't be here if they hadn't. You see, no matter how big or difficult the problem, there will always be some way to solve it. Even if one door closes, there will be another door to go through to get to the future. And just like it was for our grandparents, I am positive on the other side of that door awaits more than enough opportunity to keep us happy and busy for a lifetime. All right, that was a lot to talk, and um, I hope you all enjoy that um, short exercise on paradigm and see the big effects it can actually have on us. Um, you know, usually I I like to take comments at this time. Let me just take like two comments. While I'm, I'm taking the comments, I would like to ask um, our tech um, advisors to please set up the room. I uh, will need uh, maybe like three or four, four rooms, minimum four to five rooms, uh, so that people are no more than and, uh, four. I know they're no more than four or five in a room. So let's see if we can get some feedback at this time. If you want to give a feedback, I'm going to allow you on mute right about now. Then let's hear, let's see those hands up. I'll, I'll allow you to speak. Uh, if you can't, because of where you are, we would like to take your text messages. What jumps out, even as you are viewing that uh, short class? What, let's use the word, what convicted you the most? Or did you learn anything new?
I can't see those hands up. Okay, I'm, I'm sure you are still trying to absorb all, all that you heard. What I'm going to do right, right now, I, I just want to share um, why we are trying to set up the, the, the class. When we say set up the class, this is going to be your assignment. Um, just two questions. The, the first question is for the class to explain the following terms. Explain paradigm effects, paradigm paralysis, paradigm pliancy, and paradigm shifts based on the video you just watched. Based on the video you just watched, um, explain, and it's a group thing. So while you are getting your answer, your group leader will be writing it down. Then the second question is, what is impossible to do today in your life? For you, it's mission impossible for you today. That if you could, or if you can, if, you know, if it can be done, they can radically change everything for you. What is it that is impossible? Uh, you know, for you. So you are, you are, you are each going to, going to choose your team um, leaders when you enter the, the class. But I, I want us to think of something while we are doing that. I want to think about some few years ago, it, many, many of us loved Blackberry. You know, it's like a thing of, you know, talk of the town, you must have a Blackberry. People were advertising Blackberry just because of one thing. And, you know, and, and that future is BBM. And just in a span of a few years, Blackberry died. And Blackberry was killed by WhatsApp. You know, WhatsApp is free. Well, you know, a multi-billion dollar you know, uh, you know, um, institution died because they didn't see the paradigm coming. You know, what about things like Nigeria Airways? I used to tell my, you know, my student that, you know, do you know the country in Africa that has the first airline? And they would think South Africa, they would think Egypt. I said, no, it's actually Nigeria. I had the first airline. I said, do you know the first country in Africa that you know to actually have a radio station? And they were thinking all these developed countries. I said, no, it's also Nigeria. I said, do you know the country that, that had the tallest building in Africa? And they are thinking, I said, it's also Nigeria. So but what happened to Nigeria? Nigeria went to sleep because we didn't see the paradigm shift. What, what about things like NTA, FRCN? Think about Ibadan. It's a lovely place. Ibadan is a city that went to sleep. If you go to Ibadan right now, you see those brown roofs everywhere. It's as if Ibadan never woke up. You think about things like gala. When I, when I was growing up, you know, you buy gala, you actually unwrap the, the flour and you, and you bring out the beef inside. But right now it's gone. Think about what we are on right now, Zoom. As of December last year, Zoom had about um, roughly 35 um, million or so, or there about some, you know, very small number. But you know, but, but, you know, but right now, Zoom has over a hundred million. And right now, you know, Zoom is like number one. Zoom actually works more than every airline in America put together. Think about our super egos. There used to be the terror of everywhere with one cops. And right now we are beaten by Sierra Leone for crying out loud. You know, think about Kingsway. Think about Bata, uh, you know, shoe factory. Think about Leonard. Think about UTC. You know, think about Nitel. Think about Nitel. All these companies died down because they didn't see the new paradigm coming. GSM killed NITEL because they never saw, you know, saw it coming. The, the Nigerian you know, postal services were, you know, you know, was killed by emails. You know, so what we are saying right now is that no matter how strong your company is, no matter how successful you are, when the paradigm shifts, everybody comes to zero. Your past successes will not count for anything. Just like the Swiss watch. You know, Switzerland had over 80% of the whole share capital of the whole world, in, you know, of, you know, of, 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 of watching, watches in the whole world. Right now, they, they have less than 5%. What happened? They were killed by the same uh, you know, you know, ingenuity that they discovered by themselves. That is the electronic watch. But they never took it serious. Seiko of Japan came you know, and he saw it and he didn't even patent it. The guy went and did it and the whole thing just moved out to you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, Japanese. You think about Ford cars. Right now, it's Japanese car. Anybody want, you know, want to buy? So no matter how successful you are in your company, in your life, if you don't change your paradigm, nothing will remain successful for you. There's no guarantee. No matter how much you pray or whatever, if you don't see the times changing and you lash into the changing times and you engineer yourself, then you cannot solve the problems that are going to come to you. So I, at this point, I would will, I will like us to um, activate our room. You have... We're going to do like five minutes max. You're going to do that. Then we are going to be coming back. Now, if, if you've ever done room room before, you know that uh, the speed of your internet will also determine how quickly 
um, you know, you get it. So if two or three of you are in the room, just start, even if it's one, you know, one person in the room, just start writing out the answer that you think they are until the, you know, the rest join. Uh, each room should have between three to four people. So Ajibade, if we're ready, It looks like most people have got, I was in room one. I just uh, left there, so I don't cause any distraction. Um, okay. All right. So, but, but I can always um, pop bump into any room to see how they are doing. I, I don't think I can do that. It's only the, the host. No, I can do that, actually. I can join the Yeah. Okay.
I think we should close our rooms now. Hello? I can't hear you. Um, I, I said I, I just came from one of the rooms now. Um, yeah. I, I think that there should have been some form of orientation for our people. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not sure they paid to attend this um, these classes, because if you pay to attend a class like this, you take it very serious. Uh, some of them are simply, you know, drag, dragging their feet, if, even in the class, you know, just to interact, you know, okay, so who's going to talk? People have their, you know, so anyway, it, it would have been good if we, if this thing was done live, at least there would be, you know, some form of captive audience. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it does look like some, some of that just passing away the time. And it would have been good if, if there was a, and I, I, you know, a decision to have everybody turn their videos on. You know, that, that one keeps you glued. So uh, even when, when I was playing the video, I have a, I had a feeling that some, most people are just doing, maybe playing on their phone uh, or doing something else, you know. So anyway, that, that's just my own feedback. I could be wrong. I'm closing all the groups now. It's more than five minutes. Okay, go okay. ahead. Back. Are you with me there? Either a deviation, a movement from um, a particular uh, style or pattern to another pattern, the pattern shift, paradigm, uh, paralysis. I see that as um, a negative effect. All right, you guys are actually back. I appreciate uh, you guys are taking the 
the room conversation to the living room. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. I, I, I think um, you guys have already found the, the, the topic. So what we're going to do at this time, we are all back, I believe. How many of us are here? Uh, 21. We are missing. Um, did somebody fall out? From the Probably not. okay, all right. So let's play. So what we're gonna do? Um, let's just get the team, team leads, um, the leaders there. Just identify yourself and tell us um, your team, and just go ahead and shoot. Let's do this quickly. Anyone can go right now. Yeah, you should be able to unmute yourself right now. All right, the team leaders, please. Can we hear you? Just we don't know who you are. Just uh, unmute and give us the the riot, read the riot act to us. What did you guys learn? Gentlemen and ladies, we are waiting. I think I, I would suggest you call name and probably ask them who was your team lead. And I can just well, do group one. Who was your group lead? Group two, who was your group lead? Should be there with you. Hello, group one. Can we have your team lead, please? Group oh, one, we have, we have Mr. Okoro Silas. We have God the Onyibu. So, All right. Um, I don't know sorry, I, 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 I think I made a mistake there. I didn't allow them to mute. I think they should be able to do that right now. I think that's my fault there. Yes, Okoro Silas. Yes, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. So I was trying to specify whether I'm in group one because I didn't receive the, I didn't actually specify the grouping. But now, being that the name is already called, so uh, I, I am now in tune. And I had some disturbances. So like what I learned from the videos, I learned a lot. Now, um, actually, I have worked in places where I experienced something like that of those monkeys. I came in. When I came into uh, the place, I on, saw... Please. Hello? Hold on, please. Okay. Um, we we yeah. are addressing the questions. There were, there were two sets of okay. questions. So one is to define those um, uh, paradigm shift, paradigm paralysis, paradigm fluency, paradigm, all those things. So what did your group come up with? Then the second one is if you were to change, you had the power to change something, uh, whatever in your life, what would that be? So each each team member can share. So the team leader or the team lead is supposed to gather all the results and now come and present to the entire group. Uh, we're going to have okay. a time where okay. we're, going to get a, we're going to get a feedback. We're going to get a feedback uh, from, but that's what we're doing right now. Oh, I think this should be shifted so I will be able to collect the results together you know, because I haven't done this. Okay, uh, but did you write anything yeah. down? Did you remember anything that was said by members in your yes, team? Yes, I wrote. Yeah, just, just give us a brief Actually, of it. Okay. Mr. Just to say that one particular thing that again. I need to change that once I change this. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, one particular thing that I need to change so that when I change this thing, things will begin to move very well, everything will change, is how I perceive businesses. Because I have seen and learned that the big businesses, I think that it is all about money to start or to go into 
they are not really about money. It's about how you see, how you see what runs that business. The idea, the main idea that will run that business. I just found out this. When my one of my boss before was telling me that the problem for not starting a, a new business or not starting a business venture or not contributing more in a business is about money. I found out that it's not only about money, you must hire that is problem solving. Once you discover it, everything will queue into it, whether in our organization or in any new business. I just learned this. One very good idea that once it is made known, everybody will automatically shift into it because it is pro uh, problem solving. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Um, can we have group two? Sorry for group two. Thank you for sharing. Group two, we have uh, Mr. Andrew, we have Eric, we have Humphrey, we have Olua Supreme Steven, we have Olusha Oladunjoye, we have Osita. So uh, the representative of group two should please come okay. forward. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, Ola Sukon, Mr. Even is my name. I'm representing, I'm the group, uh, the room leader of group two. So we actually do not get a balance sometimes. So we're able to uh, identify with two of those questions aside my own personal answer. Okay, so what we, what we discuss in the group is that for the paradigm effect, we discuss that paradigm effect implies being stuck to the current state of doing things without an open mind. So that's how we explain the paradigm effect. And then the paradigm paralysis. Paradigm paralysis we explain as a direct effect of paradigm effect, which implies that one gets stuck to the, the, the current way of doing things and then you shut out every other ideas that might probably lead you into the future. So like, like the example of the Swiss watch from the video clip, we learned what happened to them, which was really a sad story. I'm sure they will be regretting that right now. Okay, so that is that about, so we couldn't actually, we were unable to go over the other uh, questions in that uh, particular aspect. So for me, um, uh, the, the personal thing for me, like the, 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 the second question was asking, what would I, change. Uh, I don't know, this is really a big one for me, but I think uh, uh, changing, if, if I have to change anything, I, I would like to work on my exposure of which I didn't get that um, uh, early enough. I didn't get the, the needed exposure early enough. So I think that's one thing I would like to change going forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right, uh, did, did anybody in your group also share about what if they had the power to change anything? Yeah, Actually, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have time to, because okay. we were... Uh, okay. Okay. All right, okay, I understand. Okay, let's go to group three. Let's go to group three. Group three, we have uh, Chidima. Amako, Esther Esena, we have Joel Olushabu, we have Oluwombi and Oluwako Bukola uh, and Sharon in group three. Please present your group leader, please. Uh, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, sir. My name is Joel Olushabu. I am representing uh, group three. I, I think you can hear me very well, but the moderator. Loud and clear. All right, sir. Uh, because time is a little bit against us, we couldn't discuss most of the terminology. But we are able to come up with, um, we are able to de de define the paradigm shift. We, we agree that it is. Uh, Embracing the new ways of doing things. Embracing new ideas. We agree that changes is, is, is not permanent. It's not something that is permanent. 
we have to open our hearts to changes. Like uh, what happened during this uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, a lot of things uh, come up that uh, change the whole world. So we should be flexible. We should try to embrace new idea. That is what we, we uh, come up with, a uh, paradigm shift. Then in uh, paradigm uh, paralysis, we agree that we don't, we, we, you don't remain on a, on a point. You don't remain on the, at a point. Don't say, I want to maintain a status quo. If you uh, uh, want to maintain a status quo, from the video we watch, we, we can see uh, uh, what happened to Switzerland, how they lost the uh, big opportunity they have. They, they are controlling the market in the wristwatch. But because they want to maintain their status quo, they saw uh, uh, the new idea, but they did not embrace it. So we agree that that is a paradigm, paradigm paralysis. Then the paradigm effect, that is an assumption to do with how we perceive the world. Paradigm effect is an assumption to do with how we perceive the world. Then paradigm pliancy is just the purposeful search for new ways to stretch the mind and break out of the box. That is when you are thinking outside the box. You should be able to think outside the box. So that is the uh, definition of those terminology. That is what we come up with. But for the second question, uh, the, what is impossible to do today in our life, that if it can be done, can change everything for you. We couldn't uh, attempt that one because that one is a part of the time run against us. So nobody was able to comment about that. Okay, that's, that's very impressive. Thank you very much. And Mr. Joe. Of, uh, that is for group three, sir. Yes, group four, I actually stumbled into group Okay, group four, we have FMX INV as one of the people there. We have um, Knowledge Exchange Center, okay. We have Olufemi and we have Taika in group four. Please kindly present your group leader for that group so that we can go. Okay, Taika, please come on. I, I, I know we had some uh, issues trying to connect and uh, make our various contributions. But uh, if the, the other members will permit me, let me just uh, stand on that uh, premises and quickly say what you know, maybe I perceive as uh, the definitions there. Well, uh, Jewel has rightly given an insight. Okay, we, we see paradigm shift as a uh, paradigm, or of course, from the definition, we are told that. Paradigm means a problem solving system. The definition of paradigm. So, what is paradigm shift? Paradigm shift we see as a, a kind of a, the consequences, you know, we, we face in the system used in solving problem. The, the, sorry, paradigm effects. So, the paradigm effects. Why the paradigm shift we see as, a, or should I explain this way that? Uh, when there is a paradigm shift, there is definitely everyone in that system goes back to zero. So we see that paradigm shift as a movement, a, a movement from one pattern to another better pattern. Paradigm paralysis, of course, which um, the, in, the, in the story we, we listen to the, 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 the uh, man that ran, ran the commentary called it the paradigm. You know, when, when another system, you know, uh, uh, makes your own system of system uh, or your own problem solving system ineffective, you know, and uh, the, I think the last one there is uh, the paradigm plan, is it, am I calling it plan, plan C? And uh, we, we see it as uh, the adaptability, the, 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 the kind of, um, uh, kind of open openness what we should have in problem solving in our system of problem solving how open it should be to give room for innovations changes 
that uh, definitely will, will better loss. For instance, even when you talked about the era of um, the watch, which uh, I think uh, Switzerland started, Japan came in, saw something, and built on it, revolutionizing uh, you know, that particular uh, uh, system. So, and then the other aspect of uh, what is uh, impossible to do today in my life, you know, that if done would change a lot of things. Of course, there are, there are, as a human being, there are a lot of things that uh, um, I have not been able to do, to do as I would I expect. And um, uh, some of them, it, it, it is easy to predict that if they are done now, that they might change a lot of things. And, um, uh, but until we, we, we get them uh, started, we, we might not know. So yes, there are one or two things I, I need to do that uh, if it is done today, for instance, like in the, the speaker in group one said that, you no, know, if one, one exposes himself or one, um, uh, if before now the, the involvement in active exercises like this is, is, is increased, you know, there, there certainly will be this eye opener, you know, uh, to a lot of things that will make life uh, um, better and uh, um, what is. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have another another uh, group? No, we only I, have four groups and that's all. So thank you very much. I'm really, I'm really encouraged by all that uh, what is, was shared right now. And, and I know that uh, we, we, we are going to go and take it, take it down and really do something about it. I can teach you techniques. I can teach you, you can memorize things, but I think it's that mind change that are really going to help us. Uh, just like I shared, I shared about uh, Blackberry, uh, who could you know, ever believe that Blackberry could just die out, just like that, and many other corporations uh, you know, that, you know, that, that we have. Even now, even corporations that took advantage of even this COVID-19, why people are shutting down. Many people make billions, you know, because they were ready. I remember um, as, a, as a trainer, I, I began using um, PowerPoints um, roughly 16 years ago, you know, <laughs> PowerPoints, and you should be able to see my PowerPoint those days. And when I use PowerPoint, you know, I, I'll come and train. Do you know that at that point, some of my fellow children were like, ah, hey, what are you doing? And now to come to show television for for for, for the place now you because they don't I say listen they, they you know the whole aspect of training has to go to visual kind of aesthetic visual and everything today some of some of those my mates are struggling to learn how to do the PowerPoint you know about two years ago I, you know I was in a meeting with some colleagues and and they were telling me how they couldn't you know get their meeting done because they couldn't form a quorum and sometimes they have to travel and everything I said me too I travel too I travel a lot I said why can't you take your meeting down to the internet. And they were like, what are you talking about? I said, no, just, just do online, just stream it. And they couldn't understand it. For me, I, you know, I, I went fully on online uh, you know, training just three days after the shutdown, just three days after the shut, you know, shutdown. So some of my mates still cannot figure out how, you know, you know, you know, how the whole thing is done because they were not open. They thought they were successful and they were very successful. They thought they were very successful what I do, but they're like, you have to learn new things. You have to think outside the box. Even if the box is comfortable, you have to do things right. So, and that's what I want all of us to start thinking and doing for ourselves. You know, for yourself first. When you become innovative, challenge yourself. Read, study, you know, ask questions. Ask, is there another way we can do the things we've been doing before? Are there new ways? And you'll be surprised you'll find new ways because the whole world, uh, people are looking for new ideas. So by the time you look at some of those quotations by uh, Thomas Kuhn, and I, I decided to pick that one out. He says, a person who embraces a new paradigm at an early stage must do so in defiance of the evidence provided by the problem solvers. People who, the community, okay, we know what to do. So can you imagine what the Wright brothers faced when they told people that, you know, they, they can create a vehicle that is lighter than, this is like actually fly. We're like, what do you mean fly? Nobody has ever flown, flown, you know, flown before. Or think about, you know, people that thought, okay, you know, we can go to the moon or, 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 or you know, we can create a submarine, you know, that, you know, that will bury people under, on, on, under the water for weeks, even down months, people can say for months. No, people would think you are crazy. So if you are the first person 
to gain enlightenment in the midst of people who, who paradigm, you know, say such thing can only be done by faith. And that's what you know, Thomas Kuhl said. He said, a person who embraces a new paradigm at an early stage must do so in defiance of the evidence provided by the problem solving community. You know, they will tell you oh, it hasn't been done before. We've tried it before. Uh, Kosheshe is impossible. Who can, you know, because they've not seen it before. But you, and they'll ask you to provide evidence, but you don't have evidence. All you have, all, all, all you have is just your faith that I believe it can be done. I believe this thing can be done, but nobody can see any facts there. You know, so I want you, you know, to, to open your mind so that you are, you are not bogged down with fear. You know, so that's which is impossible to do today, that if it can be done, can change everything. Before, we used to go and cure at um, Broad, Broad Street to make phone call in night. They would say, we call very early, around five o'clock, you are there, just to go and make phone call. I remember, you know, the days of uh, teleports, telepoints. Uh, that we used to go, uh, there's a place in Suleri, uh, you know, that, that I used to go to. And, you know, you buy your card, you go and queue, you see the long queue just to make a phone call. You know, it was basically one second, 50 naira per second, 100 naira, you know, per second. Then GSM came. Then everything, I remember the first line that, you know, that I bought. People were paying 26,000 naira to buy a line. Now it's free of charge. Then all the, all, you know, all the, all the telecoms, com uh, you know, company were doing Ijebu until Global Com says it's going to be per second. Then they all, you know, not that per second. You see, what a lot of us do today is what I would call um, a professional follow follow. People do professional follow follow. You don't you don't want to dream of something, but people start doing it because it's not making money. Exactly um, about ten years ago, um, I I had my uh, institution. You know, my 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 my, my company had a post office boss at um, at uh, Falomo. For, so every time I get like my um, dividends. You know, they will send those letters to the house or to the office. Then I have to now go uh, to, to the post office to go and, go, and go and pick up the thing. And I ask them, because I found out that some of my, 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 my checks have been there for like three, four months, sometimes six months. And I ask them, I say, why can't you send me SMS whenever I get this thing? Like, can't you guys do it? And I was told, you know, the same thing in Ikoyi. I was told the same thing in Sabo. I was told the same thing. They say, ah, and that's not how we do it. But do you know right now they are doing it now? Not the, the company doing it, not NITA is not doing it, but individual um, you know, you know, you know, you know, postmen do it, especially because nobody posts letters anymore. When you go to post office, the only thing that takes you there is maybe you want to go and collect Wish, you know, all this um, online online uh, sales thing, we normally do like Wish, Alibaba Express and everything. So whenever goods come, the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the postmasters there will send, because your, if, uh, your phone number is there, they will send you SMS to come and pick it up. And so when you get there, you now pay them. So because of their own money. So if you send SMS of what ten naira, someone can, can pay you as much as two or two hundred naira. But you see, but if we do things because of money, we cannot grow. What will we be doing for the follow? You know, so think about the guy who sat down and discovered WhatsApp. That as long as you're on the internet, you can make calls, you know, you can send videos, you can send pictures, and every single thing. And that killed modern day your telephone. And you see, that has driven. The other companies do not bring out their price, especially for you that are you are in service industry. Service industry is the hardest hit. I mean, whenever things happen, service industry is the hardest hit. You know, so if you're in the service in industry, you have to keep reinventing yourself. Because that's the only way you can actually survive. Don't wait until it is done before you do it. It will be too late, you know, by that time. So those words like paradigm effects, that is what happens to you when things change. It, it, it really affects you. But, you know, paradigm paralysis is when you think your own way is the only way. You don't want to change. You stay there. You are, you are going to enter paralysis. There's something I learned in economics, I, you know, and it's basically called the uh, paralysis of analysis, where you are, you know, you are, you are so bogged in analyzing, analyzing that you don't actually, uh, you know, get anything done. So what I'm going to do at this time, uh, I'm, I, 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 just, I just want to take a break. We're going to do like a two minutes break. Um, use that break to go grab, you know, you know, you know fill, 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 fill up your cup, fill up your mug, uh, you know, you know, go to the bathroom and come back. The next two, three minutes, we're going to be back here. Is that okay? Three minutes break.
right. Is it two minutes yet? Is everybody back? Yeah, can I, can I get a, a feedback? Hello. Oh, is everybody back? Yeah. Just want to fill up our mug. All right. So this way we now go the the extra the last hall. Um, if we had started earlier, we should have been finishing by now. So now you know now that we are ready. And uh, you know we, we, we've seen um, some of the preparatory things that we, that, we, that we need to do. So let's 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 look at some few things right now. Let's look at some details that's going to help help us. Remember, I'm talking about uh, problem solving and decision making. Problem solving and decision making. And if you observe, you find out that they actually they are really two different things really we're talking about here. One is how to solve problem and <laughs> the other one is how to make decisions. So problem solving and decision you know, making. These two words are actually very related. If you look at the, you know, the way they come, they are, they are, they are almost the same. Sometimes people can, can confuse the, you know, the two of them. They are very you know, you know, related, you know, but these two words are things that challenge you. You, you. you need different skills or different set of skills to actually apply the challenges that they bring. Sometimes I have observed that some leaders, they end up using decision-making techniques when they should be using problem-solving approach. You know, so one is decision-making technique, the other one is problem-solving approach. And sometimes they do it vice versa. You know, but if, you know, because they are, you know, they are so close, if you use one in place of other, you will not get the desired result. So knowing the difference between problem solving and decision making and understanding which skills to actually utilize in a particular situation will help you overcome challenges more quickly. You will eventually uh, you know, overcome those challenges, but to make it quickly, you have to know how to apply them. So both decision making and problem solving, they use one thing, they have one thing in common, and that, that means that they use information. They use the information they've gathered uh, you know, to inform a certain action they will take. And, that, and this is where the similarities end. So for problem solving, you need to gather information to solve problem. To take good decision, you need to gather, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, information. So after that information has been, has been gathered, problem solving and decision making, they stop being brothers and sisters. And that is where they go their, their own way. So you need to know one thing they have in common is the need for them to actually gather information. So have that at the back of your mind. Now, so when, when, you know, when, when you're seeking a solution, there's a difference between when you're seeking a solution and when you're choosing between option. In problem solving, what you are looking for, you are seeking for a solution. So a problem solver is like a detective. You know, a det <laughs> I'm, I'm very um, sarcastic, you know, I, you know, as a person. So when I think detective, one name comes to my mind, Fashola comes to my mind, and what he did at the Lekki like toll gate with his arm at the back and everything is looking. So a detective is seeking. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny, right? Okay. <laughs> I think the, I'm happy I'm not the only one that has a, a very interesting sense of humor here. All right. You know, so um, a detective will seek solution. So when you're looking at problem, so you know, solving, you are looking at any solution to a problem. Now, when you're looking at, uh, you know, making decisions, we are looking at you are choosing between options. So decision making, you are choosing option based on information. When you are solving, you know, no, no problem, you are going down. You are seeking solution. So problem solving is the process of finding a solution to an ongoing. It can be ongoing. It can be intermittent. Yes. It can be one-time failure of a process or a system, or it can even be. Something that failed completely might be one time I'll be constantly failing. So you are, you are looking for solutions to that thing. So in, in, in process solving, you are looking at identifying the causes, 
And you can only identify the causes through asking questions. You have to ask basic questions. I'm going to talk to you, you, you about the, 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 the five questions. You have to ask the five questions. Questions like where, how, who, why. You have to ask those things. And the Japanese, interestingly, the Japanese, and the, one of the techniques I'm going to show you was actually uh, invented and perfected by the Japanese. And because they did that thing, when, when you go to Toyota, you know where Toyota works, usually when something happens, they'll go and call the manufacturer. Now, I'm sarcastic again. Just here, you know, yesterday we had that our Kaduna, um, Abuja Kaduna rail line, you know, actually you know, co -co 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 collapse. What do we do? But the minister say, oh, we have called the Chinese people. I, I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, but we've been repairing rail lines forever in Nigeria, forever and ever. You know, so because we did not learn, we have not learned. And that is where knowledge transfer is very important. When you're in a company and you're the only one that has answer to a particular thing or to everything, then people cannot, uh, you know, find some solution. They, they are not empowered. You know, so in, you know, in, J in J J Japan, they find out that the conveyor belt, some people are the conveyor belt, because the guy who's supposed to be there did not come, that means every, the whole job stops. You know, the Americans gave us this thing they called the con con conveyor belt, which actually made work faster. So, you know, rather than everybody doing one work, like assembling a car, you now have what we call division of labor, where somebody, his job is to fix tire, and that person is to fix the, the windscreen. By, you know, by dividing all, all, all these things, it actually made work faster. It produces specialization. If you remember your, uh, your class in uh, economics, second school economics, it produces specialization, it made work faster. But the matter is that if that one man does not show up, everything stops where, you know, where that person is. So what did the you know, Japanese do? The Japanese went ahead and they train everybody in the act of doing everything. Even though you're going to have your, you know, your own specialization, you know, they, they, you know, they actually train, train them to do everything. They, there's a bank, you know, one of the top, top banks in Nigeria. Um, I was involved uh, you know, in, with a team that, that trained them about three years ago or four years ago. And one of the things that we try to introduce there for them is that when somebody goes on leave, when he comes back, every time he goes on, he comes back, he goes to another department. Now, they thought it was weird. When they start doing that, really, People now became specialists in virtual reality. So they can handle situations. You know, so in problems you know, solving, you must learn to ask questions. Now, in, in the other hand, in decision making, uh, it involves choosing between different courses of actions. You choose between different courses of action by evaluating each based on the set criteria. So in other words, do we take um, ABC bus, for example, ABC, um, I hear somebody say, God forbid, <laughs> or do we take, um, God is good, aha, that one is way, whatever, you know, I will travel, I went to Ghana this year, um, I, 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 keep, I keep sharing with a lot of people, I, I had a, a speaking engagement in, in Lumen, December last year, so my wife and I, you know, we just, I just took off along, I said, let, let, let us go, it's Christmas anyway, it's December period, and uh, so we, we booked, um, God, God is good, going to Ghana, and we got there, nice place in Jibo, nice, um, you know, the, uh, the terminal is nice, everything. Then my name was called. Then I, I, did, I didn't feel too happy. I was like, why would you call my name on the in intercom? Everybody will not know who I am or whatever. I one day I said, oh, they just wanted to, to let, you know, explain something to me. They said, you know, the vehicle is ready and it's about to go. And we are the only passengers in the bus. You guys won't believe I rode in a, in a nice air conditioned bus. And, uh, you know, their new buses are called the jet uh, buses. Each seat has its own television set, you know, television screen, you, you, you know, you, you can charge your phone, everything. And my wife and I were the only two, two passengers there. And we drove all the way to, you know, L L L L Lume, we now drove. And the guy continued to, uh, you know, to Ghana. Um, two months after that time in February, I actually went, you know, went, you know went, went to Ghana on a speaking engagement. And we are only six. So their law is that even if it's just one person, they will go. You see, they are building something that most, Bus terminals don't have now. I, I can advertise easily for them, and 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 I and, and I'll become. I'm, I'm not a customer evangelist. If you want to call, call it that way, you see, rather than spending more money putting posters, saying things you will not do, and printing whatever, I, just improve your customer service. People will now go and spread the news around. You know, so when I'm making decision, you have to say which one will I take. Definitely, I will take God is good any day if I'm going by land. You know, so it requires implementing an action plan. And that action plan has to be based on what you have learned from problem solving. So that is actually where they come close. That your action plan 
will be based on things you've learned in problem solving. So if you are if you are if you are not very good at problem solving, you are not you are going to be very good at making decisions. You are you are always going to find yourself in this, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, paralysis of analysis. You are you know you are like a rocking chair. A rocking chair gives you work to do. You are going back and forth, back and forth, but it doesn't take you anywhere. So a lot of us sometimes we spend so much time. We're like to just find one solution. We are we spend the whole day. The, the truth is that you've not grown your mental muscle to handle a lot of those things. When, when you grow your mental muscle, it becomes easy for you to find solutions as at when you. So it's very, very important that you think about this class and you think about how it can benefit you to be a better you know, person in, in what you're currently doing. Now, let, 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 let's look at the best practices. We have so many things we can, we can talk about here. Um, you know, both actions, uh, whether it's uh, problem solving and decision making, you know, both actions require some factors. And these factors are the things that you should consider when you are making, you know, the, the process where you are sorry, factors that are things you consider to make the process successful and efficient as possible. There are fa you know, you know, for, you know, factors, factors like when the problem, sorry, uh, you know, when dealing with problem solving, make sure that you gather as many facts as you can. Don't be in a hurry to just breeze through it. Don't be in the, don't do what they call rule to the answer. Don't just be in a hurry. You know, you know, make sure you gather as many facts as you can, you know, which will now help you make solutions more obvious. Because the more facts you have, the more you can now find out, okay, well, this is actually where the problem is. But if you do not know the, you know, the facts, you might be applying, if you don't have a, enough facts, you might be applying the wrong solution to something else. Now, in, on the other hand, when making a decision, when making a decision, you have to be, you know, action-oriented. Action oriented includes that, you know, means that you'll be able to act on your own decisions. Many of decisions, especially that you're going to make, have to, uh, if it deals with complex issues, you have to get people involved. You know, if it's an easy, you know, the, you know decision about let's have a two minutes break, I can take that, you know, you know that, that decision easier. Let's have a two minutes break, two minutes, and we are back. But if it has to be, let's reschedule this class, I can't take that decision alone. I, I you know, I have to talk to. Mr. Ogo, I have to talk to Ajibali, I have to talk to everybody. I say, guys, what do you guys think? You know, so that is the difference. Um, there is a, a microphone that is turned on. All right. I want to sleep. Uh, you have Saturday and Sunday now. You have Saturday and Sunday. Mr. Emmanuel, you can mute yourself. Okay, all right, you muted everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, those are some of the things that, that we are learning, even as we go into the virtual world. There's a lot of things uh, that we have to learn. So, uh, we're going to get better and better, really. We're going to get uh, better and better. Um, Sometimes there are some embarrassing situations. I have a friend, a Ghanaian, who is actually a professor. Um, he's a lecturer and he also works in whatever. I, one night, I was on Facebook in one night, and I saw him on live, on, you know, on Facebook. I saw him live. He was sitting on his bed. He didn't have any clothes on. He didn't have at least no top on, and he was on the system. Then I sent him. It was and I said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> he said, well, "I said you are you are live." So he, he wanted to set set up. He was trying to learn how to set up live. Um, you know, this thing for the following day. Yeah, I think we was trying to learn. On, on, you know, unknown to him, he, he, he put it on for everybody to actually see. So I told him, there's a place you click where it's only you that will see what you are, you are doing. So some of, some of those things are, are things that, that we have to learn. I, I, I was in a class, I was teaching a class uh, precisely three, mo four, three months ago. And there was a lady who was, who was running late you know, for the class. And she was in the bathroom. And she actually had her videos on. So... You know, you know, you know, because I, you know, I, I was a host, and I saw it quickly. I quickly turn off the, you know, the video. So again, those are some things that, that we have to learn. Try and error. Uh, you know, some of them are much more embarrassing than you know than the others. Uh, but um, okay, now <laughs> you know maybe I shouldn't have shared that last one. Um, there are six steps in solving problems. Some people tell you that you know there are these six, six steps in problem solving. 
uh, they will say, first of all, you define the problem. If you say you have a problem, what's the problem? Let's say, oh, I'm ill. I feel ill. M many people use the word sick. Sick is actually when you're throwing, throwing up. Uh, you know, so let's say, okay, let's say you, you know, you feel sick. I feel sick. That means you feel like throwing up. Then you have to now determine the root cause. So do you eat anything? Uh, do you have, you know, so you need to ask, ask the question. Then you have to now develop alternative solutions. So what do we do? You know, I, I, I you know, put, you know, what, 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 salt in water and drink. Uh, in my village, they will say, go and, go, go and lie down with your stomach on the floor. They have to now select a solution. Then you have to now say, okay, after selecting a solution, A, B, C, D, you must now make decisions. That's where decision making now comes in. Which one will you do? That's why you have the implementation has to now come. You have to implement the solution. Then afterwards, you now go ahead and evaluate. So I'll, I'll leave this slide for us to, to, to go through because of time. Uh, I will, you know, I'm not going to say, say, say much about that. You know, there's also another one called ideal. Sometimes you see, I, I, sorry, idea. Then, then you see the idea with an L. You know, first of all, identify the problem you have. There is no electricity in your house or the, your internet kept running out. Somebody tell me that, ah, you know, my car is, you know, is chopping fuel. That's how we use, say in Nigeria. You think they drink fuel, you think they chop fuel. So people, their mind will go to, oh, maybe my carburetor is dirty. I say, no, it doesn't have to be your carburetor, don't go there. That's actually the last thing that you actually think of doing. First of all, I asked the guy, have you checked your tire pressure? And he looked at me, what that tire pressure has to do with fuel? I said, you know that if your tire pressure, if your car is under inflated, the car will drag, and for you to maintain the speed you have, you have to not step on the gas and you not burn more fuel if your tire is under inflated. Number two, if your tire is, if your car is overloaded, you know, they, 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 there's a minimum and maximum load, you know, a car should carry. If there's too much load there, if you're carrying like bags of, of rice in your car and you are carrying three people at the back and you are somebody in the front, of course, your, your car will chop well. You know, so again, if, if your car is overloaded, that one too can also, you know, you know do that. Then, of course, you know, you don't look, and I ask, when oh, last time you serviced your, you change your oil? You see, but the first thing people think about is, oh, let me go and do the carburetor. And people have messed up those car, you know, by thinking about that. You have to look at basic things, you know, so identify, develop, execute, then assess, you know, those, those are some, some, of, some of the plans you have. Now, the one I would like to focus on today is this. Now, for some of you who are science oriented, you, you must have got, you know, seen the equation that says X is a function of Y. Now, I have drank uh, Coca-Cola around the world. I've drank Coca-Cola most parts of Africa, East Africa, South Africa, West Africa. I've drunk Coca-Cola in the Middle East, in Israel, in Egypt, in Singapore, in America, everywhere. You know, I discovered that Coca-Cola tastes the same everywhere in the world. It tastes the same. So the question is that how did they maintain this kind of quality control? How did they maintain this kind of quality control? Now, you can't say the same thing with, let's say, Mr. Biggs. <laughs> you can't say Mr. Biggs, a uh, meeting Mr. Biggs in Festac is definitely not the same thing, Mr. Biggs on the island. It's not the same thing. Well, if I, some, some, I, I feel they pour so much salt. I mean, nobody won't buy Mr. Biggs. Nobody that I know buy Mr. Biggs, uh, you know, no, 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 you know, you know, so the quality is not the same thing. In the same way, think about it. How can you buy the same McDonald's burger or the same pizza from three, four different pizza huts and it says the same thing? Because they have learned the art of quality control. And that's what the Japanese did so well. That if your result is Y, then the function of that Y is X. So you have X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. My daughter is a baker. She bakes. And um, every time she's in the kitchen baking, you see her with a notebook. She writes her recipe down to the, to, you know, to the pound, the, you know, the grain, everything. When she gets a recipe that works, then she cannot reproduce that, that, you know, that, you know, that recipe. For every recipe that she does, she writes down the ingredients, how long it took to, you know, in the oven, what, the, what she makes, whatever, whatever. Because you have to do, those are your X's. Your X1, X2, X3, X4, for you to have Y. What happens today is that many people want a why. They want to get a result in problem solving, but they don't think about the X's, what has gone into it. Now, the, 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 the diagram I'm going to show you, you know, today was developed again by the Japanese. It's called the Ishikawa diagram. And I'm, I'm using it because it's very easy to remember. Um, you know, many, many people call it the fishbone 
diagram because it looks like a fish a head. Then, then we have the skeleton of the fish. Now, the, the head is the effect. That is the desired effect that you want to get. The rest of the, of the body is called the cos or caucuses. And it came up with six. And, and those six are equipment in no particular order, equipment, process, people, management, uh, environment, and material. By the time they, they develop all, all, you know, all of these things, they, this thing now you know, led them to what they call total quality control. And that is what Six Sigma is all about. And I'm, I'm an advocate of Lean Six Sigma. You know, Lean Six, you know, you know, six, six Sigma, what you do is to, is to maximize output by minimizing waste. Again, I'll take it again. In Lean Six Sigma, you maximize your output by minimizing waste. In other people's mind, they, they think that the only way to maximize output is to input more ingredients into it. No, you just simply minimize waste. If you want to cut the cost of your finished goods, don't go and now begin to now cut the ingredients. You, you, know, you, know, you, you, know, you might have to change from firewood to gas, and that will bring it down. You know, so in Lean Six Sigma, what we do is to, you know, we do what they call process improvement. Look at the process in a company, you know, whether it's a bank, whether it's a school, whether it's an airline, and they, their problem is that, oh, we are spending so much money. So what we do there is to say, you know, you know spend days, weeks, sometimes months, and we understudy them. We understudy the, the you know, you know, you know the, we, do, we do what they call customer mapping for banks. From the time somebody comes to your bank from the gates, where are the touch points from the security to the door, you know, to the teller, to whatever. We, we map all those things. I find out how long does it take an average person to go to the bank and in and come out. And, and by the time we are done, we say, if you do ABCD, people will not spend too much time in your bank. You know, so to find out solution, you must first investigate the content of it. Sometimes it might be people oriented. Sometimes it might actually be your process in your company. Your person, I, I was telling somebody that I wake up every day at most five o'clock, between four and five, I'm already up. Like today, I was up by four. four so how do you do it without an alarm? I say, I have, I have programmed my, you know, you know, my, you know, myself. And some people think, oh, I'm sure you sleep very early. It's not about sleeping early. There are things that you do. Of course, it's not healthy to, to sleep late every, every, every time. You know, but you program yourself where you can almost wake up at the same time. Where, you know, you know, you, know, you can start a project all the time, I can finish that project all the time. So equipment, sometimes it might be 40 equipment, sometimes it might be 40 process, sometimes it might be, you know, people, maybe the person is sick, the guy that's also come there, had an accident, sometimes it can be material, maybe you have the wrong material input, input it. sometimes it can be the environment, it could be, it rained, it snowed on that day, something happened on that day, you know, that, that could not really, um, you, know, you, know, help, you know, help us continue. So then management is another thing. You know, a lot of time people look, look at those management and that is where people, people actually lay the, lay the blame. So I want us to take like one minute to look at this diagram, just one minute, look at the diagram and we're gonna be right, right back, just one minute.
we are back. And I'm sure, um, you know, by, by now, you have this image. I'm sure by now you have this image in your, in your mind. Now, when you're thinking about problems and looking for solution, many times I've found that people focus so much on what I would like to call the trivial many. The trivial many. In the fishbone that, you know, diagram that you're you looking at, those additional arrows are the trivial many. You know, focus first on the vital few. The vital few people, if your company is not doing well, how are the people doing? If your company is not doing well, how is the process that you have? If your company, if you're a manufacturing uh, in, you know, you know, company and it's not doing well, what about your equipment? You don't have to be a manufacturing, it can be anything. I mean, how, how is your laptops? How, you know, you know, how is your printers? How is all those? Are they doing, how, you know, how are the vehicles? Are they doing well? What about management? The process with the management, do you have a healthy management? What about the environment? What about the materials that you use in delivering what you are doing? So these are very, very crucial. They are crucial things that, that we need to understand uh, you know, as, 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 as we look at, uh, you know, finding some of these things now. You know, so the fishbone diagram, uh, you know, was developed in, 19, in the 60s, actually, uh, and it provides a way to find the cause of a problem. Then it can be used in any industry. I've used it in virtually, very, even in my own life. I use it in my own life. You know, if you want to pursue a degree and, and you don't know how to do it, just do a fishbone, uh, you know, the, the, the diagram or what to do. If, if you want, want to plan an event, I uh, just do a fishbowl di diagram. Tell yourself, I just say, what do you want to achieve? Okay, I, I, want, I want to have straight A's in my academics, for example. I want to have straight straight A's. Then you look at the six, what, what are the six, um, uh, you know, vital few things that you need to do. One, you need to read. Number two, you know, uh, you need to make sure you get your books. Number three, you need to make sure you are in class. Number four, you need to make sure that you do extra research. You know, number five, you need to make sure you, you, you pay your school fees. Because if you don't pay, no matter what you do, you will not, whatever. And so, so focus on that. Then what will not drive those vital few are the trivial many. What you say that will drive the vital few are the trivial many. But what, but what, what people normally do is that they focus on the trivial many. They focus so much on the trivial many that they, they don't even know what the vital few is. So that's why you waste so much time. You waste so much energy. You waste resources because you do not know where to focus on. You know, sometimes things will go wrong. And when complex issues happen and, and, you know, and things go wrong, I guarantee you the fishbone diagram can actually help you to think about the categories, all of the different factors that led to the issue. Because you want to have some, some questions that you're going to ask. Apart from the vital few, which is the sixth one you're going to ask, you're also going to ask other questions so that by the end of, of the day, you're going to find out exactly what you want. For example, if, if I'm hosting an event and I have my team with me, I ask them, what kind of event do you want to have? Oh, we want to have a great event. We want to have an event that people will show up. We want to have an event that the music will be great, whatever. So that is our why. Now, to now arrive at why, what are the X's that you need? So, so that what a lot of us do is that we do wishful thinking. Do wishful thinking, so we, 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 you know, we, we, we basically give God work. We say, ah, if God wants it to be done, not, not about God wants to be done, what do you want to be done? Yeah, God can give you the grace, you know, but what do you want to put, put up the vision first? Then what is the price you have to pay? So a lot of times today, people put, 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 put down vision, but they don't consider the price to pay. And that's why they will try, they will fail, they will try, they will fail, they will try to, and they keep wondering, why am I now doing well? You're not doing well because there are some things you are not uh, in, you know, really taking a good look at. So take, for example, um, that, that's an example you know, I, I have here for, let's see if we can go to that quickly example. That, the example here, Facebook uh, example. So suppose you run a business and you sell products online and your website unexpectedly crashes. It just crashes. And you know that it's online, do everything. He always said it just crashed. So you decide to use a fishbone diagram to, to perform a deep analysis of what caused the, you know, the crash. Now, there are four steps to using a fishbone diagram. One, step one, uh, you need to look at state the problem. The problem is what? 
our website has crashed. Then define your categories. What, what websites, what, are, what do you use it for? Okay, use it to do online sale every single thing. Then you have to brainstorm each category. After you broke it all the category, then brainstorm each category one after the, you know, after the other. Then you have to analyze your results. You have to now analyze the results that you get from, you know, from, from every single thing. Now, so in analyzing your, your results, your, your brainstorm uh, category will probably look like, like, like this. So as you brainstorm the idea, it can, be, it can be useful for you to use a technique called the five whys. And that's why those questions I was telling you are. Now use the five whys to now begin to now break it down. After getting the vital few, you now have to ask like those Japanese did and, and they still do, keep asking why. And after they, they get to the five why, they find out that by the time you get to the five, five why, the answer is always solved. You don't need to go and call the expert anymore. You always get the answer. So, you know, you, 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 know, you use these five whys to help you ensure, you know, that you have uh, uncovered the true root cause rather than just superficial cause. Many times we treat symptoms. We don't really treat the real disease. So example, initial cause, the website crashed because it ran out of memory. I've had those um, uh, excuses before all. I mean, there was a time I, I, I almost, I motioned to, for our web, web guy to be fired twice. I did to be fired. I said, how can you allow our, our web registration to expire by December? You know, you know that the whole office is going to shut, you know, shut down. How can you allow? And by the time we now get to January, we lost our website. Somebody else went, you know, went to go and buy the domain name. So we now have to now wait and buy from the person back. Made a lot of more money. You know, so for this one, the website had just crashed. First question, why did it crash? What's the cost? The website crashed because it ran out of memory. First of all, you shouldn't allow that to happen. Now you now ask, why did it run out of memory? Why? Because it was incorrectly configured. They ask again, why was it incorrectly for, you know, configured? The question is that, oh, because the site admin made a mistake. Why should the site admin make mistake? Because the development hadn't, you know, you know provided, you know, subsequent, uh, you know, subsequent instruction. Then why should that happen? Because they assume it was obvious. So the answer is negligence. You see what I mean? You know, so a lot of times, you know, we just say, this is simple, but go down. Somebody did not do their job. You know, so these five whys are very, very important for you to actually get the facts out. Because if you don't have the facts, you don't have anything to work with. So facts, sometimes things, things will go wrong. Sometimes you need more than a quick fix. So the five whys, by asking why five times, you know, to find the root cause of your problem, that's what you need to do. Keep asking why, 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 why. Especially here in Nigeria that, that people don't say the truth when things go wrong. Just keep asking why. People that work with, with me, we know that I always ask that. I mean, I mean, you hear it and hear it until you start telling me the rule. You have, you have to do your own five whys first before you come, you know, you know, come down to me. You must have asked yourself the five why. So you're always going to tell me exactly the answer. So your computer website runs down. Why did it happen? It ran down because of memory. Why? Because it was incorrectly configured. Why? At the end of the day, you're going to find out exactly what that. So by you know, by, by the time you find out, you cannot use that to now feed your fishbone diagram. You now feed it. So you have a problem. I'm trying to get my mouse. You have a problem here. So step number one, you establish a problem state statement. For example, I am broke. Say, why are you broke? <laughs> I've not been paid. Why I've not been paid is end of the month. Of course, you know. So sometimes by by, you know, by, by, by by time you add, add up to three, three questions, you already get the answer. So you now look at your method, your machine, your man. So the second step is to brainstorm the major categories of cause of the problem. Sometimes you don't have a, a machine, so don't bother yourself about, about, about that one. Sometimes it's not environmental, so don't bother yourself about that one. There was no earthquake, there was no rain, there was no night or day, because sometimes, uh, like a few months ago, I, I, I got, got a call from my village. I got a call from my village that um, my fence wall was down. The family house, the fence was down because of rain, so much rain in the village. Fence was down. So I got someone, um, a bricklayer, they also said, how much will it cost to, to, to fix this? So that is problem. So, you know, solving. How much will, will, will it cost? Go and do your quotation. So, your quotation, we're going, to, we're going to mold blog, we're going to buy tape outside, we're going to do this one. Now, much later, I found out the work was slow. And you see, people are not honest. So, I told him, um, 
Ajibade, did, did you want to send me a message? I already did. Okay, all right. Is it a WhatsApp message or a direct message? Both. Okay, because I'm 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 staring at my screen, so there are a lot of things I will not get. Um, okay. All right, just give me a second. Let, let me just quickly. I, it must be very very important for Ajibade to be sending it to, to me. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You know, so I, I insisted that the guy should send me uh, a video or, or, or pictures. And that was when the truth was exposed that the work was, hasn't gone as far as it should. So I now asked him those five whys. I began to ask him why, why, why. Eventually, the guy now confessed that he molded the blocks. But because of rain, rain messed up the blocks, so you have to mold another one. But initially, they won't tell you why. You know, they'll just say, oh, God, the work they go, don't worry, go down. So it's very, very important. So by, by the time you, you get to that, 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 to that part, you, you cannot know what to execute. You cannot know which action to, you know, you know, you know, to, you know, to, to, to not take. So when, you know, whether you are sick, whether you are well, just keep up. Symptom is what? Fever. Why are you having fever? Why, why then you're going to get to the root cause? If you don't get the root cause, keep asking the why. By the time you get to the fifth, fifth one, you are most likely uh, going, going to do that. Now, we, we do not have time to, to, to take the last exercise. Um, it would have been fun if we do. It's just, um, I think the video is about two minutes long. Yeah, about two minutes long, but, but, I, but, 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 but I don't think we have time you know, to do that. But, 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 but that video uh, you know, talks about problem and decision making. Decision, you know, you know, you know, making. What will you do? Uh, you know, you, you can go online to, you know, download it. Um, it's called the Adam, you know, Gendler, uh, you know, bridge. And uh, but please don't cheat when you do it. So just just make sure you you really do the assignments because the assignments will make you think. That's not really, you know, you know, you know make, make you think. And begin that to now begin to work your mental muscle. That's very very important. You begin to work your mental. Uh, in, you know, you know, muscle, and that's what we want everybody to, to you know, to basically do. When, when you work your mental muscle, it becomes very easy, you know, for you to be able to, you know, to handle other situations that that might, that might actually come your way. It's like you know, lifting barbells. The more you lift, after a while, lifting your pocket becomes very easy. But if you don't work, you know, work your muscles, everything becomes heavy. So, so your mental muscle also, when you put, when you, when you put it to, to work, it becomes easy for you to now solve the you know, problem easily. The more hard problems you, you solve, the more the easier ones will just come and go. So um, on that note, we are going to be wrapping up today. Sorry that we've taken a long time and all the technical um, you know, the, the, the hiccups that we had. But we're, we're going to be, I'm going to be opening it up for, for Q&A, but um, Ajibade will decide if that will happen. Or um, I will, we decide if that will happen. Let's, and, let's, uh, let's, let's have five to 10 minutes for that and we're good. Okay, what, what are we going to be doing in that 10 minutes? What are we going to be doing? For the Q&A. Oh, the Q&A, okay, great. All right. Okay, so let, let's, we are on the Q&A at this time. Uh, let, let me stop sharing the screen since we, are, we, we don't have any use for it right now. So let's just get Q&A. It could be a feedback. It could be a feedback. Um, or also, also be a question that you might want to ask. And it's very, very dicey. Um, especially when people are almost from the same establishment, <laughs> from experience, people don't like asking questions because they don't want to be <laughs> seen as um, some, some funny person. Okay, so Q&A, you, you can either type or you can, um, you can unmute your mic, which I think we, all of us can do that right now. Should be able to unmute yourself right now. So Eric, you want to say something? Hello. Feedback, Q and A. Anyone?
Are we, are we all awake? Uh, this is the problem we, we go through when, we, when people's videos are not on. So you cannot tell uh, what they are doing, whether they are still in class or not. Maybe we should have said everybody to put on their videos so they will be able to you'll be accountable. Ajibade, it doesn't look like... Um, no, you can Eric, just call, call names at random and see where we go from there. So it's... Um, all right, I, I think um, Eric has something to say. Eric, you can unmute yourself, Eric, if you want to say something. Okay. Uh, good day. This is one of the, I would say, in the year 2020, or one of the best sessions ever I've ever engaged myself into. This is wonderful, and this is a brilliant one. But, um, I would like to ask one question, Steinman. What about in a situation where you have this determination and um, the management is not appreciating all your efforts? The questions that goes to me, I know personally, if it was my own personal business, I can contribute more because whatever I have, Contribute in it is going to drive my organization. Even when you use this uh, paralysis um, terminology, but in a situation whereby you have this management you work in that operate on a double standard, in fact, double is understatement, a triple standard, and you have acted like those. Over time, you've tried to come out of the shell of those monkeys, which anytime you try to climb the ladder, you get beaten, and nobody is seeing it. Record that you need the, the acceptance of your supervisor and your management, whatever contribution you are bringing in on the table. If, a supervisor, if the company seems to be a kind of an organization, or your management seems to be a kind of organization where they use this adage of giving you a goat and holding the rope. I don't know, Mr. Ma, if you understand. They give you the goat and hold the rope. And we all know, and you must agree with me, that whosoever that hold the rope, hold the goat. Because it's goat. So when you draw the rope, automatic, it comes. The goat follow you. And you have decided not to use not to allow this uh, paralysis to affect you where to solve a two problem. I don't know. Is this the problem to keep on banging on that, your suggestion, or if the management refused to listen to you, you, you let it go? So that is just my own question. Thank you very much, Mr. Eric. Thank you. I, I think, you know, um, I, I want to thank you for your courage to ask this question. Uh, whenever I'm in a meeting and I say something like this in a meeting, people are looking at me, you know what I say? I say, I'm saying it, but you are thinking it. <laughs> I say, don't look at me that way. I'm saying it, but you are thinking it. Um, uh, you, 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 Sometimes you are, you are saying the mind of a lot of people, but not everybody will know how to even come out that way. And what you just shared right now is a global thing. Um, what, you know, one of the most successful trainings I have done, I, I'm, I'm not gonna call names now, uh, you know, to protect the integrity of, of, of this establishment. One of the most successful trainings that I, I, I did, I've done, um, both here in Nigeria and as a country, is where we engage management. When is the management? I mean, the top guys, you know. Uh, I, you know, there is a bank, a few, a few banks in Nigeria, they actually sent their staff to come and learn things on quality control, Lean Six Sigma. I mean, for like a few weeks, we're there training, lots of, you know, commitment by the company. One of the things that they all say is that, ha, this thing is good though, but this thing will die here. We say, why? I say, ha, it's not easy to do this thing. And we now find out it was a general concern that people had that all this innovation that we are, you know, teaching them and bringing, you know, to them, they, 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 were, they, they are like love song. You are playing love, love, love song. But it, it, you know, it doesn't really go beyond there. So we now propose that the management be trained. 
In fact, to make it interesting, we said well, we're going to join the management. There was one I did where both the down to the MD, this is a very big franchise institution here in Lagos. But from, from the MD to everybody, they were trained. Of course, the MD, interestingly, he sat at the back with a glass. There was a glass wall there. And he, he could hear every, everything, but he is your guy, so your guy doesn't see whatever. Everybody plus the driver. They closed work early that day. Everybody, the driver of the everybody stayed back and had to train. And you could have seen the things that were coming out. You know, and people really turn, you know, you know, turn around. Um, you know, where did that happen? So, one, I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's a global thing. Uh, even if you have your own business, people that you employ will say the same thing. Too. <laughs> it's so funny. They will say the same thing. You know, but one, um, I, I look at company culture. I, 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 I don't know uh, your company culture. Sometimes there, there could be a company culture that you met. Remember, things that we don't, you don't know how the culture is. And you're trying to change the culture, but you don't know how the culture is. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, you know, used to own um, one of the biggest PR companies in Nigeria, or a big, very big PR, PR company, and he was doing very, very successful, whatever. But he now began to hire, you know, a lot of people were hiring people who were very ambitious. A lot of them were like, "Why can't we just add advertisements?" So they can be doing PR. Look at people. Then you know, you know, get all this PR job. They will not take the advertisement to other people. They make billions and everything. The guy said, "All I want to do is PR. That's all." I want to do. Of course, people were, you know, you know, disgruntled. So I spoke to one of the staff. He said, you know what? Listen, your MD, your CEO, set up this company for himself. It is not your own company. It's just it's a family, you know, company set up for himself. And I think he is happy where he is. So if you want to take it to another level, you know, whatever, you might have to do it somewhere else. Now, the CEO, because I know him too, the CEO was a very you know, smart man. He now began to now let loose his staff. And I said, how many of you, you know, would like to go solo? And he will set them up. He will set them up. What, what about you guys? Do whatever? Because I see that you guys, you guys cannot rise above me. You, you, are, you, you have a sleep. And I see that you want to do more. So that CEO began to care. You guys team up together and form a, a company. Now, if you want me to be your chairman, I can be your chairman just to guide you and every single thing. And that's how to do it. When you're building a house, there's a level you cannot go high anymore. It gets to a level, a lot of gravity will work on the house. So even, even the Burj in Dubai, you can see the way they build it like, like a pencil, can't go higher. So when you get to your leadership something, your leadership ceiling, you cannot go higher. Some CEO cannot go higher anymore. So what they need to do to break up the company, that's the smartest to do. Break it up into subsidiaries. And I have many MGs and everything. You know, but um, so company culture is one. Um, then communication is two. Sometimes I might not be the best person to say some things where I work because they know what I will say anyway. So I might have to tell somebody who nobody will raise eyebrow, who is not radical, to say, you know what, ah, man, can, can you please bring this thing up? Whenever I say bring it up, people will pay attention, we're like, wow, this guy is talking, whatever. But that's the same thing I've been saying for years, you know? You know so sometimes communication is key. You might not be the right person to say it. Sometimes it might not be the right time to say it. Some, some things you don't say it at the board meeting. Some things you don't say that I mean, sometimes you say it when you're playing tennis or when you're hanging out. MDs like talking to them when they are hanging out. They don't want you because again, there is leadership pride in, in you know, every single person. So policy uh, is there, company culture is there, communication is there. So you might have to um, uh, uh, you know, um, test all of these things. Don't be in a hurry to give up. Uh, don't be in a hurry to give up. We have to test all these things. And also find out, okay, and, and make your leader shine. And that's one of the things I do. I add value to the guy leading me. You know, people, people see, him, see, see him do a lot, but they don't know it's not him, it's me doing it. So I make him look good. So when you make your leader look good, they are more likely to listen to you. And he has, he has worked for me many, many times. Uh, you know, they are more likely to listen to you. You know, no leader wants to listen to somebody who's just, they will see as you're just complaining, you know, whatever. But again, be excellent at what you do. So whatever I do, I'm very excellent at what I do. I make sure I do it very well so that nobody can, can put a pin on you that, oh, look at you, are lazy. Oh, you didn't you know, meet your goal and you want us to come and do this work. You know, so those things are, are things I want. Now, if you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, um, you, you know, you can get, get my number from, from Ajiba Day or from, we can talk one-on-one. -on -one, you know, but I, I think um, those are some of the things that just come to my mind. Often. It's not easy. And sometimes you might just have to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> sometimes I just have to leave. Um, you know, when you are not changing, the only place you can you can endure is civil civil 
service. They're just there, wait until you retire and just go whatever. Civil service, they are not interested in changing the, you know, the country or changing the world. It's just to just do administration and just leave and hope that you'll get promotion. Uh, you know, that's why it's always almost all to have uh, another passion that drives you in another, something that drives you that, that you do. So that if this one road blocks, you can always find you know, passion elsewhere or else you are guaranteed to be frustrated. And when I talk, I talk like this, I'm very open. I don't know if I'm, if I'm being too blunt. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm brutally blunt, uh, you know, uh, as a person, you know, so, and sometimes I also have, you know, have, you know, have to watch the things I say around, you know, some people because I can just throw, you know, throw it out. Okay, so um, that was a good question. Do we have somebody else? Um, Tiga, Mr. Tiga, it looks like, looks like um, you, are, you are trying to un unmute yourself. No, 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 I, I, I was just uh, happy here, you know, that uh, my, my very good brother asked that question and then uh, I can see the intelligence with which you answered that question. That is, that is a problem solving uh, <laughs> expert talking, so I appreciate it. And uh, I was from my own end there also say that um, um, Eric did not exaggerate when he said that uh, you, it is the best he has seen in terms of the training. I am concurring that uh, I, 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 I enjoyed this session. I wish I could go will extend it tomorrow again so that we can go through that. I want to watch that film, that particular film, and uh, uh, for you to throw more light. But the, 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 the film, you know, I was not. I was just watching, and I didn't judge uh, so much from that uh, that film talking about the wristwatch, you know, uh, talking about from the peak, you know, uh, if if uh, it's uh, what is that word there that uh, when other than shit, everyone goes back to zero. Zero. So I, 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 just an observation. I enjoyed it, and uh, thank you so much for this uh, style. It's a unique style of training. I appreciate. It. Thank you, Mister. Thank you for your commendation. And uh, usually, I must apologize. Uh, what we just did in two hours or less is a whole day work. It's a whole day, and you know we have debates about it. The groups break out. They write. They actually write manifesto. These things are typed down, and we, the trainers, now present it to the company. That's what we do. We now present it to the company. I said, based on the training, we're not just here to come and train and go collect your money and go whatever. No, we want to help you uh, in whatever. So we say, this is what your staff are going. So based on that, now we now prepare a training for the management. You know, whatever. Because you can, you can imagine people in banks, in banks, you know, that you, 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 you know, you go to a bank and say, oh, your bank promised that if I open an account, you give me, uh, you know, uh, you know, an umbrella. And they say, ah, they didn't tell us so. They said that most of they see it on newspaper. The MDs go and have a meeting at VI. They say, we're well, going to do this uh, Western Union, December transfer, whatever, whatever. Then the, the people that's also be, be, be marshalling the team out get to hear the same day the customer hears. So they don't, they're like, they say, ah, not them for that place, so we don't know. So there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. And I, I have shut down about two banks, you know, no, really. And it has to be one of the banks, two of the banks that I, I trained. And I said, well, in the training, and, and the bank manager was shocked. That I was actually one of the trainers that came to train. I said, this is not what we will train you guys. Whatever. It was like, oh, God, sorry, or whatever. I said, no, nothing happens today until this is, you know. You know, so sometimes that's what we do. We gather the feedback. It's usually very elaborate. Those groups type it out in PowerPoint. Then they present it like a speech. They come before the class, present like a speech, and people are clapping and cheering everything. Sometimes, we, you know, we, we, we give them awards and everything. Then we catalog everything. Then now present it to management. And I said, based on the feedback, but I will give you a feedback we're getting, I might have to do this. And all those com companies have turned around, all of them. All of those com 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 companies have, you know, have turned around. So maybe another time we'll do a face-to-face -face, uh, where, you know, where we can meet and talk and have lunch together and really, really do. In fact, there was a class we're doing for First Bank. There, let me mention the First Bank. And, and, and during the lunch break, some of the guys didn't want to go. The guy just started, so like, he said he's dazed. He said he's so dazed. He can't go. I say, please go for lunch. We'll talk about this. You know, and those things, I mean, First Bank turned around. It was re-engineered. And, 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 and many other institutions that we worked with and, and, and private, other private sector and public sector, even, even CBN. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can do when we are very vulnerable. 
and, and when you know that nobody will use what you're saying against you, it's very, very cool. So we also try to tell the management. So every week, we, we created a, a board for them where people can go there and post things. How you feel, you just post it there. A feedback, may make music. You write it and post it. So every Monday morning, they read it and they have, must deal with it Monday before they start work. You know, so, so those are some of the things that we can incorporate. It's already three o'clock. <laughs> Unless, I, I mean, I can do this all day. I can do it for six, seven hours all day, but um, I have to also be mindful of the people who invited me. Hello, Ajibade. Hello. Yeah, can, can we still continue or want to wrap up? Uh, sorry, because of the time, yeah. uh, we're supposed to stop at uh, 2.24 and we're already three o'clock here. Three o'clock, yeah. I think we should round up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. You've done justice to this topic like I've never seen before. I don't want, uh, in fact, we've been doing problem solving, but I think this particular time there was a spin about it whereby you had added so many things and it was practical as possible. You brought in case scenarios that could um, allow people to understand the uh, subject matter, uh, matter. And where you came in from, from us understanding the angle of uh, paradigm shift, paradigm itself, it gave a whole magnifying lens to the topic itself because um, you are able to understand some preconceived notions that influence your judgment, that influence the way you do things, that influence the way you actually go about things. And that is where you came in from. And that was super, 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 super nice. And from the feedback you've gotten from the participants, it showed that it really, really got across to them and they could relate with some of the things that you've said. And, and which is where we want to be. We want to bring our trainings in such a way that it meets it meets the needs and expectation of our participants. And that's what you've been able to do with this training. And I know that some of them want to speak more to you. They want to say more about some of the things you feel because most of us work in organization and you, you find yourself when you join an organization, you are very serious. You bring in ideas, you are bubbling with ideas, but by the time you work in uh, two to three years and you say this and they are not taking it in, you say this and, you know, or people are not even speaking up and you are always the one bring, you know, it kills your morale and you, you tend to be like that. You understand, like the monkey video that we watch. So thank you very much for this. And I would have loved that probably at a time, maybe at a, a further time, maybe this could be some of the things we could do more as a group in terms of problem solving, whereby you can come back and train people more. And I think people from Excel African group will go back and tell all of our colleagues of how wonderful this training is and how much they want. And I would like the people from Excel to give a feedback to the, uh, uh, to the HR so that they can know how important this is in terms of turning the company around, in terms of problem solving. And kindly fill the feedback form that we sent to you. I sent in a feedback form, check your chat. Uh, I sent in a feedback form for everybody to fill. What we want to do with this feedback form is to get uh, your response from this um, session and so that we can go back and work on some of this response and so that we, we don't just want to have trainings that are for training sake. We want to have trainings that we can apply and implement in the long run because we want to see that thing. We want 2021 to be something totally different for Excel, for where we work, and for our personal life, you understand, because this is applicable to your professional and your personal life. So, Mr. Emmanuel, thank you very, 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 very much. In fact, I need to come and thank you personally on the WhatsApp. Thank you very much for this. And uh, uh, thank you very much to all the Excel staff that actually attended this um, uh, uh, um, program. Uh, this class. Thank you to our alumni, uh, Esther I can see Esther, that actually attended, and I hope you've taken something positive away from this class. So on this note, I will be ending this class. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. Thank you to all the participants. And I say, I, I think we should say thank you to KEC too at this point. Okay, thank you, everybody. And this is the end of the class. Have a wonderful day, everyone. All right. Bye. See you guys again. My pleasure.